If you're going to play them, just put them away, all right? I did put them away. You didn't. I did? You didn't. I found sting on the floor. Well, a sting on the floor is better than a bite on the butt. Just play your own, all right? Anyway, they're not even mine. I told Mark no one else would play them. Who? Mark. The clearest little kid. <laughs> Jenny, what are you doing? Making breakfast. And don't call him the clearest little kid. He hasn't got any spots. They're, they're freckles. Well, if they're freckles, how can they move all around his face? <laughs> you really think you're smart, don't you, Simon? Yeah. <laughs> Jenny, what is that? That's breakfast. That's disgusting. You can't have baked beans for breakfast. Hey, Dad. Dad. What is it? Jenny's having baked beans for breakfast again. Cold ones. Jenny, you can't have baked beans for every meal. I like baked beans. Oh, oh, look at the tin you've opened. All right, you'll have to eat them all. Oh, she's going to eat them all. I'm not going on the bus with her. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with her? Simon said Mark was the clear silky. Mark? Oh, yeah. What is wrong with his face? He's got travelling freckles. Uh. Uh, uh, Jenny, Jenny, come back here, miss. Sit down. I told you, someone is going to have to eat all those baked beans. Oh, oh I'll eat them. <laughs> That's Nudge. Right on cue. Oh, I love baked beans. You love anything that doesn't move, Nudge. <laughs> Nudge is not one of mine. Jenny, I'm putting your sandwiches in your bag. Nudge comes from... Where do you come from, Nudge? Down the road. <laughs> Down the road. What sort of sandwiches are they, Dad? Banana. I'm not banana, Dad. Bananas are good for you. Have you ever seen a gorilla wearing glasses? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what I mean. But they go all brown and look yucky. Well, eat them with your eyes closed. <laughs> How are you going with that woman, Dad? A woman? Uh, down, Nudge. I'm only talking about his secretary. Well, Simon, I don't think of her as a woman. I think of her more as an Encyclopedia Britannica on legs. <laughs> a sort of Encyclopedestrian. <laughs> oh, you mean she's a knoll, Mr Kelly? Got it in one, Nudge. I mean, I only studied architecture at university for five years. <laughs> I only worked in the country's most successful partnership for another seven years after that. I have won awards. I have met and known Lady Mayoresses. <laughs> Do I know anything about architecture? Not according to that string lipped razor tongue smart. Uh, Miss Stevens. Good one, Dad. Shut up. Uh, you're early. Of course. Um, would you like something to eat? <laughs> I'll just go through to the office. Yes. Why don't you? You've got five minutes. Why don't you spend it changing the designs I've been working on for the last three weeks? <laughs> <laughs> don't have to take any cow poo from her, Dad. Cow poo. She means bullshit. I know what she means. <laughs> Jennifer, don't use that language. I don't have a right to say about her. Would you get her out of here? Come on, Jen. Bye, kids. Bye, Dad. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's going to be another wonderful day. the door it's going in the doorway it's the best place for them <laughs> fills up the hole some of them actually fit oh, that's your main traffic area you can't have a door there i am having a door there otherwise we'll have all these empty hinges hanging off a blank wall door here main traffic coming through here move the fireplace of course much better well, I'm glad you've solved that. Ah, Miss Stevens. Uh, um, you've made a mistake here. I don't make mistakes. Uh, well, I'm sorry. You've made... <laughs> you've made one this time. I did not say that. If I typed it, you said it. I find it hard to believe that I would have said, I look forward to shafting you with the plans. Nevertheless. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to fire this girl. I don't make mistakes, Mr. Kelly. You can't blame me for your deficiencies. Today. <laughs> Goodbye. What? 
Uh, you heard that all right, didn't you? Fired. Made redundant. No longer in my service. You have just joined the mashed ranks of the unemployed. In other words, I've shafted you. I got my severance pay. Severance pay? Fine. How much do I owe you? Three weeks at four twenty a week. That's one thousand two hundred and sixty dollars. Fine. Plus seven hours overtime. That's one hundred and five dollars pro rata less tax. That's seventeen dollars eighty. Fine. Plus my holiday entitlement. That's three fifty seconds of twelve sixty. That's seventy two dollars sixty nine. Fine. Plus, 50% overtime loading, that's $10.90, a grand total of $1,430.79. I can't afford to fire her. <laughs> here. There's $5 too much here. What's that for? That's for the 30 seconds it's going to take you to get out the door. <laughs> Goodbye, it's been fun. Hello, uh, yes, high speed help. Martin Kelly here. Yes, um, do you remember that um, temporary girl that we were talking about, the replacement? That's right, yes. Could you send her over right away, please? Thank you. That was quick. <laughs> I'm Betty. You must be Mr. Kelly. Yes. Um, how did you get here so fast? I took the Daylight Express. <laughs> Right. Well, um, come in. Um, uh, this desk here, um, the photocopier, typewriter, of course, and uh, papers in the second drawer. And first thing, could you retype this for me, please? You see, that word isn't shafting. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, yes, it is, but it's not supposed to be. You see, I didn't say that. She said I did. Did she? Yeah. But I wouldn't, would I? I mean, I would show people the plans, wouldn't I? I would. Of course you would. We're going to get along fine, Betty. Just retype that for me, would you? Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Betty, Betty, um, how long have you been doing this? Let's see. Came in the <laughs> that two minutes? Yeah, but... <phone rings> Hello. Yes, this is Martin Kelly. Oh, uh, high-speed help. Yes, uh, have you ever thought of changing your name to Turgid Temps? <laughs> Never mind. What do you mean she's not available? She's already here. No, her name's not Philippa, it's Betty. Well, if she's not available, how come she's already here? There's no need to be like that. <laughs> Betty, you're not a secretary. No, I'm a Wilson. <laughs> you're not from High Speed Hill. No, I'm from Walgett. <laughs> I don't understand. It's a town? <laughs> yes, yes, yes I, I, I know that. But what I... What's this? This is from my wife. We were all really sorry when she passed away, Mr Kelly. Yeah, well... Yes, thanks, Betty. Um, she said if ever I came to Sydney to, you know, look you up and that you'd look after me for a bit. Yes. Well, um, you can stay with us until we find a place for you, OK? Oh, thanks. Um, I was really sorry when Cousin Margaret, you know... She died, Betty. It's all right. We're allowed to say it. Don't slam the door! That'll be the kids. Come and meet them. Kids, kids, come and meet your cousin Betty from Walgett. She's going to be staying with us for a while. This is Jenny. Hi, Betty. Hi, Jenny. And this is Simon. Hello, Betty. Hello, Simon. G'day, Mr. Kelly. Oh, and this is Nudge. He is not one of mine. Nudge, say hello to Betty. Hello, Betty. Hello, Nudge. What do you do? He eats. Now, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Deb. I'd like you to meet your cousin Betty from Walgut. Now, Deb. Oh, oh. oh. What is it? Ladies' things. <laughs> oh. Well, you better sit down. Oh, not me. Her. Oh. <laughs> Suppose so. Really? Have you been to Sydney before, Betty? No, never. 
I was worried about all the criminals and thieves and that. It's really bad down here, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's a jungle. <laughs> yeah, a jungle. So that's why I wanted to come and stay with the family for a bit. Yes, and we're very glad to have you, Betty. Uh, Jenny, could you show Betty where to put her bags, please? Thank you, darling. Now, listen, Deb, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you were very rude to Leave Betty just then. Leave me alone, Dad. I don't want to talk about it, all right? Well, you're going to have to talk about it. Deborah, Deborah, come back here. It's happened already. What? The thieves in the jungle. My bags have been stolen. Hello? Hello, yes, Chatswood Police? I'd like to... Yes, I'll wait. They're playing music. <laughs> Just as well I'm not being choked to death. Music to be murdered by. <laughs> oh, no, not you. Sorry. Yeah, hello, Chatswood Police. Yes, um, I'd like to talk to someone about a burglary. No, I just had one. <laughs> yes, yeah, some luggage. Suitcases. Yes, yeah, suitcases. Name? Oh, a Betty... Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, I know I'm a man. <laughs> oh, oh, my name, yes. Kelly, Martin Kelly. From Walgett. I don't think they want to know that. Oh, is that important, that she's from Walgett? Is that a clue? <coughs> Betty. Betty Wilson. Hang on. Say hello. Hello? That was Betty. This is me. <laughs> Where was it? On the Namoy. Not Walgett, the suitcase. Oh, in there. In there. Uh, in my office. What was in it? Um, oh, Everything. Everything. Well, I don't know. They stole it before we had a chance to open it. That's why I'm calling you, OK? Are you going to send someone around? Right away? Whenever you can. Fine. Good. Thank you, Constable. Sergeant, then. Goodbye. Well, I'm sorry, Betty. They'll get to us as soon as they can. Apparently, they've got a murder, three armed hold-ups, and an indecent exposure to look at first. It really is a jungle, isn't it? Yes, it really is. Have you finished with the phone yet? Yes, I have, but excuse me, miss, I would like to have a word with you. Oh, uh, Betty, perhaps you can unpack or something. Oh, oh, oh no. no. I can't. No. I could make a cup of tea. Fine. Deborah, come with me, please. Look, you've been behaving very badly lately, and I think it's about time we had a look. Oh, Deb, don't do that. Look, what's the matter? Oh, come on, Deb, don't cry. Look, sit down. Look, what's the problem? It's Mark. Mark? Oh, yeah, the one with the... They're freckles. <laughs> yes, of course they are. Now, what's the problem? He's dumping me. Are you sure? Well, Mark told John Jackson to tell Tiffany to tell me. <laughs> Tiffany? Your best friend? Yeah. Isn't it great how your best friend can't wait to give you bad news? <laughs> well, look, darling, I mean, it's not the end of the world. There's no need to cry about it. But, Dad, he's dumping me. Look, I, I don't know what to say. It's, it's just one of those things that happen as you grow up, darling. I mean, look, if your mother was here, she'd be able to explain it. Dad, look, it's all right. We'll work something out. Good girl. Well, look, um, I tell you what. Why don't we have a nice family welcome dinner for Betty and take our minds off it, eh? Oh, I can't. <laughs> Why not? Well, I've got to go up to Tiffany's. I have to tell her to tell John Jackson to tell Mark. That I yeah, but um, well, what about dinner? Well, I can have something over there. Oh, all right. Well, well make sure you do. And, and don't be late. And don't forget your homework. And who the hell is John Jackson? <laughs> Here we go. Just as well I had this in the freezer, eh? Mmm, smells great. What is it? It's a curry. <laughs> Dad, it's always a curry. Simon, you like curry. You reckon I make great curry. But you make them every day. <laughs> One of these days, you'll curry the cornflakes. Ooh. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> Eat your baked beans. <laughs> oh, you like curry, Betty? Oh, I'll eat anything. You want to stay for dinner, Nudge? Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> we so humbly grateful. 
Look, that's enough of that. Anyway, look, it's not curry. It's beef rendang. What's beef rendang? It's an Indonesian curry. <laughs> not too hot for you, Betty? <laughs> oh, isn't it always the way? As soon as you sit down to dinner. Yes? Mr. Kelly? Yes, can I help you? Detective Sergeant Burke and Constable McEwen. Oh, of course, please. Uh, come through. Go through to the living room, would you? Betty, it's the police. What have you done now, Nudge? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, you certainly took your time getting here. Well, perhaps next time you call the police, Mr. Kelly, you'll be good enough to tell us where you are. I did. <laughs> didn't I? No, you didn't. You told us where Walgett is, which I believe is on the Namoy. <laughs> well, look, I'm um, sorry, Sergeant. You uh, see the Sergeant. The pardon? I'm Detective Sergeant Burke. But you're a... Sergeant, that's right. Yes. Well, I'm sorry, it's just a bit hard to tell when you're wearing plain clothes. It's not that they're plain. <laughs> they're very nice, but perhaps you should put some stripes on your bag or something. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to give us some details of the stolen items, sir. Oh, there were suitcases. Ah. <coughs> this is Betty. From Walgut? Yes, you've been there. Yeah. Oh, well, you should go. There's a fantastic water tower. <laughs> the suitcases? Oh, the suitcases. There were two of them. That's two? And they had everything in them. <coughs> Colour? Oh, well, uh, there were some blue jeans and a pink shirt with little red pink sort shirt. of flowers in it. The suitcases! Oh, they were blue. Blue? They had uh, brown leather straps. Brown leather straps. And brass locks. Brass locks. One of the corners was sort of crushed in. Sort of crushed in. How come you know so much about it? I took them. <laughs> Simon! He's only a boy. Dad, I, I took them and put them in the spare room. But why didn't you tell me? Well, why didn't you ask? Because you're never here. You treat this place like a hotel. Dad, don't start. <laughs> look, look, your sister's the same. In and out, never a word. You just eat and sleep here. Do you know how much of these officers' time you've wasted? I didn't call them. Ah! ah. ah. Are you going to put my brother in jail? No, dear, not today. Oh, poo. I, I, I'm really sorry about that. I'm really embarrassed. You see, Simon... Right all right, sir. It happens all the time. Oh, does it really? No. <laughs> well, um, better safe than sorry, eh? Whatever you say, sir. Good night, Constable. <laughs> Miss. Sergeant. Maybe a murder will turn out better for you. <laughs> I think I handle that rather well. Well, I'll say good night now, Mr. Kelly. It's been a big day. Good night, darling. Good night, good night Betty. Good night, Betty. What? Forget it. <laughs> oh, give me that. Uh, Dad, the footy. That'll be for me. Not necessarily. Hello? Yes, she's here. Hello. Mark. This Saturday night? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay, see you then. Bye. That was Mark, eh? Yep. Back together again, eh? Oh, that's great. I'm really glad for you, darling. You see, I told you that everything would work out fine. All you've got to do Mark? is get... Debbie, listen, um, I can't make it Saturday night after all. Well, I just think we've been seeing too much of each other and I want to see other boys in it. <coughs> well, we can still be friends. Bye. That was Mark. Yep. The Mark with the face <laughs> who wanted to dump you. That's right. But I thought you wanted him back. Well, I did. Why? So I could dump him. <laughs> I can understand that. I can't understand that. <laughs>
show is recorded in front of a live audience. Hey Dad is a Jacaranda production for the Seven Network. I'm going as fast as I can. Look, I'll wash. I'll be here all night. It's not your turn to wash. The roster says I have to wash up because it's Tuesday. Well, it'll be Wednesday by the time you finish. Will you hurry up? I don't want to get my hands all yucky. Let's try it again, Betty. Put your rubber gloves on. I've got them on. Oh. OK, Betty, from the top. <clears throat> OK, two, three, and... Oh, what's my first word? Raindrops. You know, like the ones that keep falling on your head and echoing. <laughs> oh, look, that's not in it, Debbie, and I've got to do this for the auditions tonight. If my throat holds out. <clears throat> um, what were the what were the raindrops on again? Roses. Oh, weren't they on the kittens? No, the whiskers were on the kittens. Well, where are the noodles? They're in the next verse. Look, it's raindrops on roses. No, 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 don't tell me, don't tell me. Oh, I know now. Raindrops, roses, whiskers. Are you sure there's no noodles? No noodles. <clears throat> okay, I've just got to get the memorisation, okay? <clears throat> now, one, two, three. Now, what's my first word again? Raindrops. <clears throat> Raindrops on ketones and whiskers on noodles. Something or other and warm all and strudels. Oh, how am I going so oh, far? Fantastic. Mittens <laughs> on kittens and all sorts of things. These are a few of my favourite objects. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm getting the hang of it now. Um, it's just a matter of seeing it in your mind, you know? How do you get whiskers on noodles? Oh, oh, it's just a song, Jenny. Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Hi, Dad. Hi, Daddy. Oh, Jenny, hi. Hi. Hey, Dad, guess what happened at school today? Mr Kelly, I kept your dinner warm for you. Oh, uh, just a minute, darling. Uh, thanks, Betty. What are we having? Whiskers on noodles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Betty. Oh, just what I wanted, a nice home-cooked baked dinner. Hello, everyone. Hello, Mr. Kelly. I know I shouldn't have mentioned food. Hello, Nudge. Have an apple. Oh, I've already got one, Mr. Kelly. No. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, darling. What happened today? When? At school. Nothing. Jenny, are you going to finish those dishes? No. Dad, can I watch TV and does this thing on that go in it? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Look at the time. I must fly. What's the rush, oh, Betty? Oh, well, it's the auditions at the Musical Society. If I can sing, all right. <clears throat> I'm going for the part in Sound of Music of Maria. Which part? All of her. <laughs> hey, Mr Kelly, I, I was in a play once. I was the back end of a horse. Mm. Nothing ever changes, does it, Nudge? <laughs> um, Dad? I found a really, really good flat for Betty in the paper this morning. How long have you been reading the classifieds? Oh, I just thought I'd Hang on out. a minute. What's the big rush to get rid of Betty? There's no rush. Simon, we all agreed that Betty wasn't staying here permanently. Oh, that's before we knew she could cook. Look, the longer we leave it, the harder it's going to be. The harder what's going to be? To get rid of it. I mean, <laughs> to help her find a place of her own. I agree with Dad. Well, I reckon we should vote on it. What do you mean, vote? Well, you always said this was a democratic household. And it is, but I... Jenny, it's a vote. What's happening? Dad's trying to get rid of Betty. But Betty's my best friend. 
friend. I am not trying to get rid of Betty. All I'm trying to do is help her. Uh, all those in favour of uh, Betty staying? Aye. Aye. Three to two, Dad, you lose. Who said he's allowed to vote? All those in favour of Nudge voting? Aye. Aye. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> he can't vote on whether he's allowed to vote. Of course he can. They do it all the time in the United Nations. That's democracy at work, Dad. Yeah, well, here's something else they do in the United Nations. Veto. What's that mean? Means no. The Russians do it all the time. <laughs> and that's democracy at work. Working. Working. Betty, what are you doing? Just keeping an eye on things, Mr. Kelly. <clears throat> These are really good, aren't they? Yeah, they're quite good. We had one like this in the library at Walgut. Did you? Yeah, except you had to turn the handles over. I'm not even going to ask. Most of them. You don't have to... What? Oh, forget it. <laughs> Come in, Deb. You may go through now. <laughs> Actually, uh, Deb, I wanted to talk to you. Uh, Betty, could you leave us alone for a moment, please? You want to talk to Debbie? Yes. In that case, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, now, Deb... Uh, Deb, uh, before you start, what about my dress? It's fine. No, not this one. The one you're going to buy me. Didn't I buy you that one? I bought you that one. Yeah, but I need another one. What do you need two dresses for? Well, I can hardly go to the formal in this one, can oh, I? Oh, yeah, the formal. Oh, right. When is it? This is Saturday. Look, I told you that the other day. Oh, right, OK. I remember now. I'm sorry. Look, I'm really busy at the moment. Um, it's, it's, it's late night shopping tonight, all right? Look, I'll go and buy it with you then, it's when I finish here. Um, yeah. Hang on, wait a minute. There's something else I wanted to talk to you about. I know, the shoes. No, <laughs> not the shoes. I want to talk to you about Betty. What about her? Well, you seem rather anxious to have her move out. No, I don't. Yes, you do. I don't. Well, how come you pinned the flat stilette page to her pillow yesterday? Oh, you saw that, did you? Yeah, it was a bit hard to miss, considering you circled three of them in red ink and left a note saying, these won't last. But Dad, ever since Mum died, we've all had our share of things to do around here. Well, now Betty does it all and I feel useless. Oh, darling, that's silly. No, look, she does all the cooking and everything. Well, she's good at it, but... Well, I used to like doing that for you. Yeah, I know. Look, sooner or later, things will be yeah, back to but... normal. Uh, yeah, but what? Nothing. Oh, come on, it's something. What is it? It's the kids at school. What about the kids at school? Well, they're saying things. What are they saying? Well, you know. No, I don't know. Yes, you do. No, I don't. <laughs> look, let's assume I'm a moron. Yeah, that's it. They're saying I'm a moron? No, 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 she's a moron. They call her Spongehead. <laughs> Look, Deb, what you've got to realise is that Betty has spent all her life in the country and she's really out of her depth down here. In fact, she's pretty close to drowning. <laughs> but she's family and we promised your mother that we'd help her find her feet down here. And you don't want us to break a promise that Mum made, do you? No, of course not. Okay, we'll just try and be a little more patient, all right? Okay. All right, darling. Run along now and send in Sponge, uh, Betty, as you go. <laughs> oh. Where is it? I had it the other day. Ah, Betty. Yes, Mr. Kelly? Have you seen it? What? My protractor. I might have. Well, either you have or you haven't. Which is it? I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? I don't know what it is. Oh, it's the semicircular thing with angles on it. Have you seen it? Oh, the Harbour Bridge thing. <laughs> Have you seen it? Yes. Uh, well, uh, where is it? I don't know. But you just said you'd seen it. Is it lost? Betty, do you want to help? Yes. Then don't help. Well, there's no need to be like that. Oh, just a minute. <laughs> If you can't beat them, join them. Yes, you right, Dad? Yeah, I'm fine. What is it? Um, can we speak? Yes, you right, Dad? Yeah, I'm fine. What is it? Um, can we speak to you in private? Yeah, yeah. Betty, could you leave us, please? I'll just leave you alone then, shall I? All right. Now, what is it? Dad. Simon, isn't that your jacket? Yeah. Well, why is he wearing it? I lent it to him. Oh, now I'm clothing him as well as feeding him. No, just have an apple. Oh. I've already gone, Mr. Kelly. Oh, how is it? Well, it was a bit flowery. Oh, God, I'm sorry. No, it's not your fault. Oh, terrific. Now, what do you want? Dad, I'm a delegation. Ah, that's it. It's an uprising, a coup. 
I'm being deposed as head of the family. <laughs> Dad, don't be silly. I talk on behalf of Jenny and myself and me. Oh, of course. And we want Betty to stay. Why? Because she can cook. That is not a good enough reason. That's good enough for me. <laughs> Look, when we find her a nice place, she is leaving. End of story. But Dad... End of story. Get out of here. And give me back my protractor. I haven't got your protractor. Well, someone took it. Nudge, you probably ate it. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, of course not. Nobody ever takes anything around here. Things just grow legs and walk off my desk. <coughs> Mr. Kelly. Yes, what is it, Betty? Could I see you in private, please? <laughs> Why not? Why not? You want me to leave? Yes. No, a bit. No, I know I'm in the way. It's best if I go. No, Betty. No, no, as Dad always says, five's company, six is a crowd. Isn't that two's company? In the country, we have big families. <laughs> Makes sense, I suppose. Look, Betty, it's not that I want you to leave. So you want me to stay? No. Uh, surely you want a place of your own. No. Why not? Well, because then I'd be on my own. And I'm used to being around family. Well, you'd still be around family. I mean, you'd still be my secretary, wouldn't you? Would I? Ah, uh, yeah. Because... <laughs> Because I'm really getting the hang of it now, aren't I? Yeah, I mean, look at that letter you typed for me on Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that was really good, wasn't it? Oh, Mr Kelly, you made me feel so much better. Oh, good. Well... <laughs> I'm thrilled to bits. <laughs> Boy, I had no idea formal dresses cost so much. Hope she gets more than one wear out of it. She can hardly wear it to netball, can she? Yeah, maybe she should get married in it. Three times, make it worth my while. Did you pick it out, Mr Kelly? Well, uh, I picked one and Debbie picked one and we thought she'd try them on and see what people thought. Oh. Okay, Deb, let's have a look. Oh. Oh, I like the shoes, Deb. Mm. Hey, Deb, I asked you to put my dress on. You're not wearing that. Well, I'm not wearing this. Little Bo Peep goes to the ball. Look at the bows. There's nothing wrong with bows. You wore bows to your last school dance. I was nine. Nine, sixteen. What's the difference? Seven years in a flat chest. <laughs> Look, Simon and I agree, and I bet Betty does too. Let's vote. Hands up those who wanted to wear my dress. Aye. Oh. Betty. Betty. Um, hands up all those in favour of my dress. Aye. Three to two, Dad, you lose. <laughs> but if you wear that, the boys will be all over you. Well, that's the idea, Mr Kelly. <laughs> Besides, that one does look like little Bo Peep. Yeah, but all she lost was a sheep. Two, three, and... Raindrops on kittens. Wrong! Oh, no. <laughs> OK, look, this is going to have to stop. You kids are going to have to stop taking things off my desk. Where are the parallel rulers? Simon? I don't know. Deborah. Why would I want them? Nudge. Nudge. Yeah, Mr Kelly? Have you got the parallel rulers? No, this is the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Simon, aren't they your jeans? Yeah, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Why are you wearing Simon's jeans? Because they fit. Why don't you wear your own clothes? Well, they're at home. Well, why don't you wear them? Because I'm never there. I can't argue with that. Look, Nudge, you're going to have to stop going to Simon's wardrobe. I don't. I get them from that basket there. That's the dirty clothes basket. Yeah, but I only get them when he's finished with them. <laughs> Look, you're going to have to stop doing it. These clothes are getting filthy. Look at this T-shirt. Do you think Drive can get these stains out in just 24 hours? Gosh, I don't know. Beetroot is a real problem. Oh, shut up. Give me that. Uh, Mr. Kelly. Yes? Could I have a word? Oh, why not? Why not? What is it, Betty? Um, is this your protector of fingering? Yes. Why did you take it? I didn't. Well, where was it? With all these. Here's my parallel ruler and my fountain pen. And here's the bracelet that Deborah lost the other day. Yeah. This is Jenny's case. I found it under her bed. Where is she? Out the back, play. Jenny, come in here, please. Only don't be too hard on her. Oh, I feel like a dobber. It's just all. Oh, you did the right thing, Betty. Yes, Dad? Jenny, why have you been stealing things? I haven't. Yes, you have. Haven't. You took all these. Didn't. We found them under your bed. 
because you're going to make Betty go away forever and I'll never see her again. And Debbie wants her to go too. And she's my best friend and I love her and I hate you. Oh, darling, I'm not going away forever. Aren't you? No. No, she'll still be working for me. Yes, truly. And I'll see you every day and we can still be best friends. Will you sleep over with me sometimes? Yes. Every night? No. <laughs> Will you come over and cook for us sometimes? Yes. Every night? No. <laughs> you can't blame me for trying. Clean up your own mess. A what mess? Him for a start. <laughs> Forget it, mate. Why does this place always have to look like a bombs hitter whenever I've got someone coming? Dad, look. Looks all right. Yeah, well, it does now. I've just picked everything up. Well, what are you worried about? He'll be here in two and a half hours. Who? Adrian. Oh, you're going to the formal with Adrian Stevenage? Yeah, so. Oh, God. What's up? She's going to the formal with Adrian Stevenage. Oh, God. Simon, just because he's a bit sophisticated. Oh, just because he's a bit of a cretin. Just because he's not a football head and he's into art and culture. Oh. Well, at least he doesn't go posing around in tight little running shorts and T-shirts with the sleeves cut off. Girls like that. Well, this one doesn't. Anyway, he knows how to treat a lady. What do you know about that? <laughs> treat him rough, I say. Bring him in, I'll show him a few tips. Dad, tell him to not be here when he gets here. Be not here when he gets here. I won't be here. I wouldn't touch him with a 40-foot pole. Come on, mate. Dad? Mm hmm? Are you going to shave? Yep. When? Tomorrow. Why can't you have one today? I already shaved this morning. That's the way it is in God's great plan. In the morning, I shave them off. In the evening, they grow back. It's an endless spiral. And you women think you've got it tough. Yeah, well, can't you have another one today? For this Adrian? Yeah. Well, I want him to think I come from a nice home. <laughs> you do? Yeah, I know, but... He must be kind of special. Yeah, he is. He's terrific. He's really sophisticated and mature. And he can speak French. Sacre bleu. <laughs> Oh, Deb, oh. you look absolutely beautiful. You look beautiful. I love your hair. Absolutely top, Deb. He's here. <gasps> Be still, my heart. <laughs> OK, Simon, nudge out. Oh, quick, he mustn't see you. But I'm ready. Well, it doesn't matter. You've got to keep them waiting. Oh. <clears throat> I can't believe it. I'm more nervous than she is. <laughs> You must be Adrian. Yes, pleased to meet you, Mr. Kelly. You're Deborah's father. I sincerely hope so. <laughs> Come in. I see you have one of the old 240 bowlers. Quite a good car in their day. Yes, we managed to stagger from point to point in it. Have you seen the new 760? Have you seen the price? Dad says that isn't a major consideration when you're selecting a car. Oh, well, that's an interesting point of view. These uh, Federation places are quite charming, aren't they? Yes, they're quite nice. Hmm. Should look quite good when you've done it up. <laughs> I rather thought I had. Uh, just don't make the mistake that most people do and try and do it all yourself. Get hold of a good architect. Well, uh, actually, you see, um... Ah, here's Deb, the most beautiful girl at the formal. Hello, Debbie. Adrian? Oh, doesn't she look beautiful? Oh, and this is Betty, our cousin. Mm, pleased to meet you. My father was wondering if you were Kelly, the architect. Oh, he's heard of me. Well, he uses a lot of architects. He thought you showed a lot of promise. He said it was a pity you dropped out of the mainstream. Mainstream? Hmm, the innovative side of things, you know, the progressive spearhead. He said with your potential, it's a pity you've become... A hack? Your word. Get out. What? Get out. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I said get out. But we're going to the formal. I'm not going anywhere with you. In fact, I wouldn't go with you if you're the last person on this earth. Now, get out! <sighs> Deborah, what are you doing? Did you hear him? I can't believe it. I've never seen such an arrogant pain in the... Deborah. ...neck in my life. <laughs> did you hear what he said to you? Yeah. Did you see what he did to Betty? What happened? You should have seen what he did to Betty just then. Where is she? I don't know. Poor thing, she's probably so upset. Now, Deb, don't cry. I'm not crying. She's not. I'm furious. She is. <laughs> so, what's on television? 
No, look, Deborah, you are going to the formal. No way. Look, you've been wanting this for months. You look a million dollars. You cost a million dollars. You've got to go to the formal. <laughs> On my own? No, I'll take you and I'll be proud to do so. Oh, don't be ridiculous. What's wrong with me? I can speak French. Dad, you're my father. No worries, sis. Give me five. I'm not going with you either. Why not? I'm terrific. You're my father. <laughs> I love you both, but there's absolutely no social kudos in me going with a member of my immediate family. Oh, look, someone's got to be able to take you. I'll take you, Dad. He does. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kelly, but I, I borrowed some of Simon's clothes again. Oh, that's quite all right, Nudge. You've just earned free food for a month. Wow, oh, Deb, you'll need this. Oh, it's beautiful. Where'd you get it from? Adrian gave it to me. Adrian gave it to you? How come? Well, I made him an offer he couldn't duck. Dad, you didn't wait up for me, did you? No, no. Yes. How was it? Terrific. How was Nudge? Perfect gentleman. I was the only girl there with a year 12 bloke. <laughs> How was his dancing? I don't know. He didn't dance. He just ate all night. <laughs> anyway, they left me free to circulate. Great. Michael Dyer asked me to dance seven times. Really got up Tiffany's nose. <laughs> well, I'm glad things went well for you, darling. You look absolutely beautiful tonight. Thank you so much for everything, Dave. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry I wasn't much help with the dress. I'm really not good at those sort of things. I wish your mother was here. Oh, Dad. You look very much like her tonight. You know, she told me once how when she came home from her first formal, she sat up talking to her mum all night. I'm sorry you missed having that. Dad, I know all the other girls are probably talking to their mothers right now, but I bet I'm the only one talking to my dad. drop me from the team. Why not? Because I'm terrific. Because they'll lose without me. Well, there must be some reason. I mean, they don't drop you from the football team for nothing. It was a mere technicality. I missed training. Well, where were you and what were you doing? I'll tell you where I was, but I won't tell you what I was doing. <laughs> All right. Where were you? At Cathy's. Oh, Simon. Relax, Dad. Everything was above board. Yes, well, you can't expect to play if you don't practice. I wanted to practice, but her parents get coming in with cups of tea and scones. I was talking about football. 
Anyway, I don't blame them for dropping you. <laughs> but they'll lose without me. They'll lose with you. That team hasn't won a match in seven weeks. You know why? Yeah. The other teams don't mind if they get their hair messed up. I mean, look at your last match, you know? you it, Three times during the ruck, you stepped back and started combing your hair. Where do you keep your comb, anyway? In my sock. Anyway, Kathy was watching. Uh, true love. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Speaking of true love, here's your sister Deborah. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Fine. Good. How could you do that to me last night, Dad? I've never been so embarrassed. What did you expect me to do? What happened? Oh, she and Andrew were mooning all over each other on the couch like bilious budgies. It was sickening. <laughs> what did you do? Well, I merely suggested that it was 11 o'clock on a school night and perhaps he should go home. You called him a randy little ferret and threatened to set the dog on him. <laughs> we haven't got a dog. Yeah, but he didn't know that. Anyway, he does look like a ferret. Have you seen his nose? It's aquiline. It is not aquiline. It looks like he sticks it in a pencil sharpener every morning. <laughs> they could use him as a javelin at school sports. Dad, you had no right to do that. You treated me like a child. You are a child. I'm not a child. I'm a woman. Why do you think I threw him out? Dad, what am I supposed to do? You tell me to bring my boyfriend's home, and when I do, you kick him out. I've never been so embarrassed. Well, what do you think it was like for me? I mean, I was trying to be discreet and leave you alone. There I was, sitting up in bed, reading the same page 20 times over, nerves jangling, waiting for him to make his move. <laughs> you have bought him two in scones, Dad. He did. Five times. <laughs> good on you, Dad. What do you mean, good on you, Dad? Listen, I'm not having you getting a reputation as one of those girls. Oh, you mean one of those girls you take out? Anyway, what's it to you? <laughs> well, you're my sister. There'll be plenty of time for that sort of thing when you're my age. No, they won't. I'm not having her thrown off the team as well. Is it about my argument about? None of your business. Is it about S-E-X? Well, sort of. This one says sex is sexist. Anyway, Dad, I still think you had no right to behave that way. <sighs> All right, look, Deborah, I may have acted a little hasty. You can, you can ask Andrew around again tonight. Four. I've still got some scones left. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Mr. Kelly. Morning, Nudge. Have a scone. Not hungry, Mr. Kelly. If you're not hungry, why are you eating that apple? Oh, yeah. I'll finish it now. <laughs> well, I never thought I'd say this to you, Nudge, but it's nice to see a normal face at the breakfast table. Hi, Mr. Kelly. Do you find me attractive? <laughs> In a word, no. No, be honest, on a scale from one to ten, what would you rate me? Minus seven. Now, don't try to spare my feelings. I can take it. Nudge, what's the problem? Well, I have a growing suspicion that I'm, I'm lacking in charisma. Charisma? <laughs> yeah. I looked in the mirror this morning and I said, Gerald. Gerald? Who's Gerald? Well, that's my name. Girl, no wonder we call you Nudge. <laughs> anyway, I came to the conclusion that women find me totally <coughs> resistible. Are they putting something in your food at school these days? You've all gone mad. You're all preoccupied with sex. I'm not preoccupied. Just can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> Why do I always get the ugly one? No good with girls. Oh, Nudge, don't worry about it. Some people are good at schoolwork. Some people are good at sports. Others are good at singing, some at painting. But everybody's good at something. Well, what am I good at, Mr Kelly? You'll be late, Nudge. <sighs> good morning, Mr Kelly. You all late? Oh, I know. I'm sorry. I mucked everyone up this morning. Poor Ruth was nearly in tears when I arrived. I bet she was. Yeah, I felt really sorry for poor Ruth. Good. Don't you want to know who Ruth is? No, I don't. She's a lollipop lady down the road, not that you can. What? No, you don't want to know. Oh, Betty, for God's sake. Every morning you come in here with these ridiculous stories and we obviously can't start work without them. So, who is Ruth? Why is she so upset? No, you don't really want to know. I really, really want to know. Now, who the blue blazes is Ruth? Oh, now you're just being nice. I am not being nice. Betty, tell me or I'll kill you. She's a lollipop lady down the street and she always holds the traffic for me. So? So? This morning I was five minutes late. There's a traffic banked up right around the corner. <laughs> you mean she held the traffic for you and you weren't even there? Well, I'm always on time, usually. Gee, the drivers were really cranky and everything. I know how they feel. I'm surprised they didn't run over you. <laughs> One of them tried to, but Ruth swatted him with a lollipop. 
Is that the end of the story? Yes. Are you sure? There is no more? No. Fine. Then can we get on Except with... Except that I'll be late tomorrow morning, too. Why? Well, because Riz said she'd be late, so I said I'd wait for her. <laughs> Fine. Can we get on with it? Oh, damn it! Look what you've made me do now. What's the matter now? Oh, I've put the toilet where the kitchen's supposed to be. Oh, well, someone got out of bed on the wrong side this morning, didn't we? And don't go quoting your half-baked Walgett wisdom at me. I'm in no mood for it. Damn it, I just can't concentrate this morning. Oh, what's the matter, Mr Kelly? You're behaving like a bear with a sore head. Yes, I'm sorry. I know I am. I'm, I'm worried about Deborah. Oh, boys. How did you know? Oh, what else is there? <laughs> Surely you trust Debbie, Mr Kelly? Well, of course I do, I think. It's that pack of pimply-faced prowlers prowling around my front gate that worries me. <laughs> They've just discovered puberty and they think they're the only ones who know about it. Growing pains, Mr Kelly. Yeah, I know, but when will she grow out of them? No, not, not her, you. Me? Yeah, well, she's doing all the growing, you're getting the pains. <laughs> all fathers go through her. Yeah. Listen, what, what did your father do when you were 16 and all the boys were hanging around like jackals around a chunk of meat? Uh, no offence, Betty. He got a drenching gun. A what? A drenching gun. You know, you stick it in the cow's mouth and you pump it full of drench. <laughs> um, of course, he used to chase them out of the house yelling, I'll teach you to French kiss. <laughs> Once, he did. He caught one. And, oh, it wasn't pretty. But well, I can hardly use a drenching gun, can I? What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to trust her, Mr Kelly. Otherwise, you'll drive her away and you'll never know what's going on. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Well, that's what happened with man Stan Hickey. What? What happened? Well, he was scared of Dad. So every Friday night, he used to drive me to the water tower. And night after night, week after week, he was after me. Betty, prove your love to me. Till finally, I weakened. Oh, <gasps> Betty, you didn't. What happened? <laughs> when it came down to it, Stan got so excited he hyperventilated and passed out. <laughs> <laughs> then he, he fell out the back of the ute and hit his head on the water tower. <laughs> when the ambulance took him away, he was still screaming, Was it good for you? Was it good for you? <laughs> of course, I said yes. Why? Well, I didn't hit my head on the water tower, did I? Now, sit there and we'll start building the new nudge. Can't have something to eat first. What is the point of putting you on a diet if you're going to start out by eating? I'm, I need to build my strength. I'm feeling weak. Nudge, this is a charisma diet, remember? Yeah. You're going on this diet because you want charisma. Yeah. Because you want to be a love god. Yeah. Because you want to be a sex object. Yeah. So tell me now, what is it you want? I want something to eat. <laughs> Nudge, you have got to get rid of this emotional dependence on food and transfer it to women. I do? Of course you do. If you went after women with the same energy and dedication you put into hunting bananas, they wouldn't stand a chance. Well, if I go on this diet, does that mean the next time we meet two birds, you get the ugly one? Hey, no diet is that good. But at least you'll have a chance if I'm not around. You won't be fat. I'm not fat. You're fat mentally and girls sensed it. <laughs> Tell me, how do I get a thin brain? <laughs> Through self-control. <laughs> and now, are you ready? Well, I think so. What if I crack? <laughs> I won't let you crack. Now. Ready? Resist! Ah! 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 <laughs> Me. What does it say? It's saying to all beef patty special sauce, not a sauce, sesame seed bun. That's the devil talking to you. Sounds like a big man. <laughs> Put it down. I can't. <sighs> Forget the hamburger. Think of women. Remember, you can't take a Big Mac to the movies. Well, I always have. <laughs> yes, but it is not much fun when you get it home, is it? Say to yourself, I want women. I want women. Are you saying it? I'm trying, but all it comes out is I want food. I want food. <laughs> Bite, nudge. Concentrate. Think of women. I'm trying. 
Think of long, blonde, silky hair. Think of girls in bikinis. Think of slim, tanned legs and lissom, curved bodies and big boot. Don't stop. Don't stop a thing. It's working. Say the bit about the slim, tanned legs again, will you? Slim, tanned legs. Oh. Oh. What's going on here? Oh, Nudge is on a diet, Dad. Yeah, sounds like a hell of a menu. <laughs> no, that's just to keep his mind off food. Ah! What? He said food. Ah! I said food. Ah! I said it again! I know I shouldn't ask this, but why is Nudge on a diet? <sighs> it's the Israel Army Charisma diet, Dad. I'm gonna be a love god. <laughs> Good luck. Listen, did Deborah come home with you? No, she wasn't on the bus, or maybe she went to tears. Yeah, probably. Well, listen, when she comes in, will you tell her I want to see her? Okay. Oh, Mr. Kelly? Yes, Nudge? Say the bit about slim, tan legs again, will you? I liked it when you said that. <laughs> Hang in there, love God. <laughs> Where have you been? It's after ten. I was at Tiff's. I rang and asked if it was all right. Oh, no, you rang and told me, and then you hung up. Telling is telling. It's not asking. I suppose you haven't done your homework? Yes. Oh. Well, look, Deborah, you're obviously sulking about something. No, I'm not. Yes, you are, and I hate sulking. Now, if you're still angry with me for throwing Andrew out, come out and say so. All right, I'm mad at you for throwing Andrew out. Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, we can talk about this. No, we can't. I'm ready to listen. Well, I'm not ready to talk. Deborah, look, we've known each other now for... How old are you now? Sixteen. For sixteen years. And whenever you've had a problem, we've always been able to talk. But, Dad, you always just tell me what to do. But that's what I'm here for. I don't want to be told anymore. I need to work things out by myself. Well, I can help. No, you can't. All right, you tell me. What the hell do I do now? Oh, Mr. Kelly, don't muck up my files. I can never find anything when you've been at them. Well, I don't know how you can Give find anything in here anyway. Give it to me. Now, tell me what you want and I will find it for you. I want the Perkins letter. Oh, is that all? Look, here you are. It was under your nose the whole time. But you had it filed under T. That's right. T for Perkins. No, T for Tuesday. That's when it came in. That is how I was. It should be under P. Oh, Mr. Gilly. There is no such day as P's Day. For God's sake, I can't stand this. I'm going for a walk. Well, well don't you want your coffee? No, I don't. File it under TT. TT? Yeah, 3.30. That's the way you do it, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, you just missed your father, and he was in a foul mood, too. No, actually, I didn't want to see him. Oh. Have you got a minute? Well, I was going to do some filing. Doesn't but matter. no, no, it can wait. Now, what's the trouble? Well, it's sort Boy. of... Boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, one in particular. See, Andrew and I have sort of been going out together for a while now, and he's starting... Putting the hard word on you. <laughs> Who told you? Nobody told me. They always do it. Oh, I thought it was just me. Oh, no, every girl goes through it. Men are so unoriginal. <laughs> I keep saying, you know, if, if, you, if really... you really love me, you'll prove your love. Who told you? Stan Hickey every Friday night. <laughs> Men are really unoriginal. <laughs> What's supposed to do about it? I mean, I feel obliged because he spends money on me. On what sort of things? Well, he took me to the Pizza Hut. <laughs> well, I can tell you one thing. It's worth more than a, a pan-fried supreme with extra cheese. <laughs> it's so confusing, Betty. Well, do you love him? I don't know. Now, all your life, your father has taught you right from wrong. Now it's time for you to make up your own mind. Well, Tiffany reckons I should. Oh, she just wants to find out from you what it's like. I had a girlfriend just like that. What'd you tell her? I told her it was like strawberries and cream. <laughs> strawberries and cream? Yeah, you always think it's going to be better than it is. <laughs> uh, Betty, I want you to take a letter to the town clerk. Oh, 
All right, Mr. Keller, but um, in that case, I'll have to leave a little early. What? Why? Well, because the council offices close at five, so if I leave... No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What I meant was you'll have to take it down. I said I would, but I've got to get there before they close. I'm not getting through to you, am I? You take it down, we put a stamp on it. Well, that's silly. Why is it silly? Well, why waste a stamp if I'm taking it? Betty, you are trembling on the brink of unemployment. Watch my lips. I am going to say the letter... You are going to write it on a piece of paper. That means you will take it down. Then you will type it up. Down. Up. Are you with me? <laughs> Fine. Pencil ready? Commence. Today's date? Town clerk, usual address. Dear sir, I'm pleased to inform you that the first stage drawings are almost oh, complete. Hang on, hold your horses. Oh, I'm sorry, am I going too fast with you? Look, I can't do that Arab riding, you know. <laughs> Right. What are you talking about? You know, all those dots and squiggles like the Arabs do. No, no, no. That's shorthand. Oh, well, I didn't know the Arabs did shorthand. The Arabs don't do shorthand. They do Arabic. Well, it, it's all Greek to me. I just do running right. Of all the officers, of all the architects in the world, why did she have to walk in here? <laughs> Mr. Kelly, your daughter Jenny is in the at last, it's an intelligent conversation. You may go through now. Thank you, Jenny. Over and out. Oh, no, for God's sake. Jenny, what do you want? Can I have a bike for Christmas? But, Jenny, it's not going to be Christmas for ages. But it's coming early this year. What do you mean? Nudges on a Christmas diet? No. No, Jenny, that's a charisma diet. Oh. Yes, oh. Well, can I have a bike for charisma, then? Get out of here. Ah, uh, drop it. Get out, get out. Oh, bloody kids, drive you mad. Oh, oh, Mr Kelly, she's only seven. I know how old she is. She's my daughter. Listen, why don't you mind your own business? <gasps> Mr Kelly, you've been in a rotten mood all day. Well, what do you expect? You can't type, you can't file, you think shorthand is Arabic? What are you good for? Dad. No. Ah. Go home. Dad, you can't speak to Betty like that. Oh, terrific. Now you're running the office. She's running the family. What's left for me? Look, Dad, I know why you're mad at her. I'm mad at her because she's useless. You've always told us to be honest with you. So? So you be honest with you. What do you mean? Well, you're mad because I asked her for advice and not you. Don't be ridiculous. Dad. Yes, I suppose I am. I just feel that we can't talk anymore. Oh, well, that's silly. Of course we can. It's just that I've got to start making some of my own decisions, and you've got to start trusting me. Yeah, but you're just a kid. Dad, I know right from wrong. How? You taught me. Oh. I suppose I'd forgotten that. <laughs> so did I. Betty reminded me. Don't turn your back on them. They grow up just like that. Was that the door? Yeah, these came from Betty. Who could have sent me these? Oh, isn't there a note? Yeah. Oh, that's in Arabic. Oh, let me have a look. Mm. I think it says, Dear Betty, sorry I was so rotten to you and thanks for everything signed me. Oh, Mr. Kelly, you didn't have to go and do this. Yes, I did. I've, I've been absolutely terrible to you. Oh, no, you haven't. Yes, I have. I insulted you and I shouted at you. Oh, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. Don't tell me I didn't when I know I did. Dad, you're doing it again. Yes, I know I am, but I'm shouting an apology. Put <laughs> some water and you can finish shouting at me later. <laughs> Mr. Kelly? Nudge, you're eating. Yeah. Yeah, he's gone off his diet, Dad. Oh. Nudge, don't quit now. I don't need it anymore, Mr. Kelly. I found the girl of my dreams. You have? Yeah, perfect ten. You've met a ten? Mm. She can eat ten cheeseburgers in a row. Now, that's what I call a woman. <laughs> it sounds like a match made in heaven. Next thing you know, he'll be sending her flowers. He's already sent her his Big Mac. His <laughs> Big Mac? Nudge, that's not very romantic. Well, I know the way to a woman's heart, Mr. Kelly. I put a big pink bow on it. <laughs> that's classy. Well, I told you, I'm the love god. <laughs>
Hey, Dad, where's the wee fix? It's here. It's all here. What's all that? All that is what came out of that cupboard. Thirteen packs of cereal. Count them. Thirteen. Everyone open, everyone half eaten, and everyone gone stale. Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I sense a crusade coming on. That's right. <laughs> and I'm not going to buy any more cereal until this lot's eaten. Do you realise there are millions of starving people in Asia? What are their names? What? <laughs> well, if we knew their names, you could send them that lot and you can buy some fresh ones. Yes, and then they'd go stale because you never fold the papers down. That's right. I mean, look at these rice bubbles. They don't go snap, crackle, pop anymore. They go moan, groan, sog. Come on, Dad. <laughs> There's no energy left in this Nutri-Grain. If Grant Kenny ate that, he wouldn't have the strength to pull up his Speedos. Oh, I'd love to see that. <laughs> That's enough. Do you kids realise how much food costs these days? Hello, everyone. Nudge, don't have an apple. Well, I can. I told you not to do that. It's a banana. Do you realise there are thousands of starving gorillas out there? Nudge, bananas don't grow on trees, you know. Oh, yes, they do. No, they don't. They grow in, they grow in a bin down at Franco's Fruit and Veg for $3 a bunch. What's up with him? Don't call me him. OK, what's up with her? I heard that. <laughs> She's on a crusade. Yeah, and it's about time. You kids have no concept of the value of money or where it comes from. You think you can just ask for it and you get it all the time. Hey, Dad. Yes, Jenny. Can I have some money? See what I mean? What for? School excursion. Another one? Oh, why do I pay school fees? Your kids are never at school. How much? Ten dollars. Ten dollars? Where are you going? Hawaii? I'm going to the nocturnal house at the zoo. What's in the nocturnal house? I don't know. Why not? Because it's always dark. I'm paying ten dollars for you to stand in the dark? Put your school bag over your head. You can do it for free. <laughs> Everyone make spider noises. And Dad, while you've got the wallet out, I need some money for new gym shoes. Yes, of course you do. How much? Forty dollars? Here's twenty. Buy one and hop. Oh, come on, Dad. <laughs> oh, all right. Dad, I need some too. I've got an appointment at the hairdressers. Oh, dear. Dad, that's only seven dollars. That's what it cost me for a haircut? Yes, and that's what it looks like. <laughs> I'll need more money than that. Oh, all right, all right. There you are. Here, Jenny, take this. What for? Hold it up to your ear. You can hear the seaside. Dad? Yes, dear. What are you talking about? He's on another crusade, Jen. Oh, is that all? I'm talking about you kids sending me broke. Ah, oh, Dad. No, I'll tell you what. From now on in this house, we are going on a strict budget. I'm going to give you $20 a week each, and all your expenses can come out of that. For everything? Everything. Oh, that's not very fair. What do you mean? I can't manage on $20 a week. <laughs> you're not getting anything. All you're getting is out of here. Come on, Deb. Let's blow $10 and get a cab to school. Out. Well, here are, Mr Kelly. Give him the rest of that. Give who the rest of that? The starving gorilla. Ah, oh, Betty, there you are. Am I late? No, no. It's only five to nine. Oh, honey, the traffic was terrible this morning. You walk to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Betty, is that the mail? Yeah. Uh, this one, you must have sent it to the wrong address. It's, what? It says, not known at this address. Let me see. <clears throat> <laughs> it's that Pritchard Smith character. The things people will do to get out of paying a bill. Oh, are you sure that's where he lives? Of course I'm sure that's where he lives. That's where I built his house. I mean, he could hardly do a moonlight flit with 40 squares of split level under his arm, could he? <laughs> Oh. Well, we'll get the solicitors on to him. Meanwhile, file it under bad debts. Okay. <laughs> City people. Dad never got one of them bad debts. Oh, well, country people are honest. They knew it was the right thing to do. Oh, no, they knew Dad would knuckle them. <laughs> he had a real bad temper, Dad. He was rich, though, but. That's a normal approach. <gasps> you have just given it to no, me? this one's really official. It's from overseas. Oh, it's from Mum. Oh, I didn't know your mother was a foreigner. <laughs> She's not. She's been on a walking holiday in the Himalayas. Look, she sent a photo. Oh. Oh, funny, isn't it? You being so tall. What do you mean? Well, your father's so short. I suppose it's because he's Chinese. <laughs> That's not my father, and he's not Chinese. He's a Sherpa. He's been dead for seven years. Oh, he looks all right here. <laughs> Not him, my father. Oh, anyway, I suppose it's for the best, really. What? Otherwise, you'd have to tell him if your mother's run off with a Chinaman. <laughs> Whatever you say, Betty. 
I bet you got on really well with your mother. Yeah, I used to, but these days I'm not so sure. Oh, come on, Mr Kelly. Mothers always favour the boys in the family. I know my mum used to spoil Derek Rodden. Derek, your brother? No, mum's potty calf. <laughs> he was just like one of the family, but we used to eat with us and everything. At the table? Oh, yeah. Mum would hang a bucket round his, his head and he'd slurp and snuffle away. Sounds just like nudge. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, Mum would get really cranky and she'd yell, You're not leaving this table until you've eaten every last garrick in your bucket. <laughs> she never said it to Derek, but... <laughs> You're Mrs Kelly. Yes. From the Himmel. Uh, the what? The mountains. Uh, the Kelly. Himalayas. Yes. That's right, I recognised you from your photo. Oh, who are you? Oh, I'm Betty from Walgett. Oh, come in. Oh, thank you. You lost something. Oh, no, only I thought you might have brought him with you. Oh, uh, brought who? The Chinaman. I did not know I was supposed to. Oh, well, I suppose it's for the best, really. His dad says, you know, east is east and west isn't. <laughs> isn't what? Is an East. Now, they're not like us. Who are not like us? Chinamen. Oh. Is my son at home? Uh, no, he's out, but he'll be back in a minute. Would you like to sit down? Oh, thank you. <clears throat> and the children? Oh, no, they're still at school. No, it's just the two of us. I was afraid of that. <laughs> so we can have a nice natter. Oh, good. <clears throat> <clears throat> Anyway, tell me all about your holiday. Oh, it was marvellous. Everybody should do that trip. Oh, I've always wanted to. Where is it? <laughs> it's in Nepal. Oh. On, which one should I see first? Which what? Which Himalaya? <laughs> no, you, you don't see the Himalayas one at a time. You see them all together. Oh, so you went with a the group then? Yes. <laughs> See, only I thought it was just you and the Chinamen. Oh, no, there were, there were nine of us. We walked 17 kilometres each day. You walked? Mm, yes. Up all those mountains? Oh, yes, of course. Well, if you were going to walk, why didn't you go somewhere flat? <laughs> oh, you should have gone to Walgett's. <laughs> why would I want to go to Walgett's? Oh, because there's a terrific water tower there. <laughs> Is there a water tower in the Himalaya? No. Yes, there. You see, you should have gone to Walgett. <laughs> anyway, um, how many mountains do you have to walk up to get there? To get where? To the Himalaya. No, the Himalayas are the mountains. <laughs> what did you think they were? Oh. I thought they were a resort, like, you know, Dunk Island. <laughs> Who are you? I I'm Betty. From Walgett? Yes. Oh, you have been there. No, no. I never understand why people go overseas without seeing the best bits first. <laughs> oh, look, the children are here. Oh, God. <laughs> Hello, darling. Grandpa? Oh, Debbie, mm, quite a young lady. Oh, Simon, look at you. Handsome young man, but you're breaking hearts already. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so big. <big-y. laughs> yeah, it matches his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is... Oh, who is this? That's Nudge, Grandma. Oh. oh. Hello, Simon's grandma. Oh, he's not one of mine, is he? Oh, no, no, I'm like, but I'm like one of the family. Oh, really? Which one? He's like Derek. Derek? Uh, who's Derek? His mum's potty car. <laughs> Baby, who is that woman? That's Dad's secretary. Oh, thank God. I thought she was his mistress. <gasps> this is Kelly. Not in front of the car. D.S. I'll make some tea. I'll give you a hand, Betty. Oh, seems an obliging young man. Well, he knows that's where the food's kept. <laughs> Why did you say he was like a cow? Oh, because he's got three stomachs. <laughs> well, and uh, tell me all the news. Uh, how, how have you been, Simon? Same as always. Terrific. <laughs> and your father, how's he been? Dad says he's going broke. Going broke? No! This morning it ran out of money. <gasps> Simon, Debbie, is there a problem about money? <laughs> I wouldn't say there's a problem, Grandma. I'm just buying my gym shoes one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. 
it's, it's not too bad if you hop. <laughs> Grandma, I hope you don't like your tea too strong. Well, no, darling, I don't, but why? Well, it's just that one tea bag doesn't go too far among the four of us. <laughs> you mean you don't have a tea bag each? Did you hear that? Some people actually get a tea bag each. <laughs> Perhaps I can help. Oh, you weren't going to offer us money, were you, Grandma? Well, I was, but you're right. You do have your pride. How much? Well, lots of pride, I suppose. No, no, how much money? Well, would a uh, hundred dollars be enough? Each? Oh, I mean, each. Well, I... Uh, look, traveller's checks will be okay. No, no, I... <laughs> I have the cash. There. There it is. That's for you. That's for you. This is good of you, Grandma, but there's no need for Dad to know about this. No, I understand. Pride is a terrible thing. Martin's always been stupid about money. Yeah, he's, he's crazy. crazy. <laughs> that must be why he's got all those bad debts. Bad debts? What bad debts? Oh, he's got a whole fall full of them. He hasn't got any good ones, but... Oh. Hello, everyone. Oh! Mum! Oh. Oh, hello! What are no. you doing here? I didn't expect to see you. Oh, oh, the flying visit. Oh, darling, you could have stayed with us. I'm going to. It's 5.30 in the morning. I told her to do it. Are you mad? It's 5.30. It's the middle of the day. Mum, it's 5.30. It's the middle of the night. You can tell by all that dark stuff out there. Well, we're all going jogging. We're all going back to bed. That's what civilised people do in the dark bits. Oh. What's happening? Oh, your grandmother's gone mad. Look, we did this every morning in the Himalayas. At first light, we'd be up and we'd jog to a foothill. It's very healthy. Those Nepalese live to, to be 120 years old. They live to be 120 years old because they never get a chance to die every time they put their head down. Some idiot like you bangs a gong and sends them up another foothill. <laughs> Early jogging gets the red corpuscles circulating. Well, my red corpuscles don't want to circulate. They want to go back to bed and I'm going with them. Oh. Well, who's coming jogging with me? I'll come, Grandma. Good. Simon, don't you want to live to be 120? Not if every money's going to be like this. <laughs> Come on, kids, let's get back to bed. You wait till I wake up. <laughs> Hi, folks, welcome to another Hi, fine Dad. morning here in uh, good old... Did Sydney you manage to get back to sleep last night? I can never get back to sleep when I'm working early. My red corpuscles kept yelling, We want to go jogging! We want to go jogging! <laughs> I finally dropped off to sleep just when it was time to get up. Well, can I get you anything? Yeah, get me some of those worn-out rice bubbles. I can identify with them. They're gone. What are gone? The rice bubbles. They're gone. Oh, well, I'll have wheat mix then. They're all gone. What do you mean they're all gone? There were 13 half packs of cereal there. That's six and a half full packs. They can't have all gone. Well, they have. We've been burgled. What kind of burglar would steal 13 packs of cereal? A hungry one. <laughs> This is ridiculous. I mean, somebody must have taken them. I did. Why? Well, what you need first thing in the morning is a real breakfast. I had 13 packs of a real breakfast, and you've done something with them. What have you done with them? I got rid of them. Would well, you throw them in the garbage? No, I gave them to Nudge. Same thing. <laughs> Here. That's a real breakfast. Oh. oh, that's a real mess. What's that? It's steamed sea cucumber. I cooked it myself. Well, you can eat it myself. No! <laughs> I've had mine already. It's delicious. How can it be delicious? It's all green and quivering and lying there. Don't touch it, Dad. Uh, it's still alive. Have a little taste. Oh, no, if I stick a fork in it, it might get angry. <laughs> Looks like an extraterrestrial, Dad. That's it. You've discovered the E.T. Cucumber. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> sea Cucumber has some of the most marvellous protein known to men. It's been eaten for centuries by the, the desert nomads of Mongolia. If they're desert nomads, where do they find Sea Cucumber? Behind their horses. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, hi, Simon's grandma. Oh, at last, I found a use for nudge. Nudge. <laughs> Dear boy, here, sit. <laughs> Eat. 
Oh, God, what's that? It's a Mongolian nomad's breakfast. Before he ate it or after? There you go, Mum. If, if he won't eat it, it cannot be eaten. When it, when it comes to food, he's a walking, talking black hole. Food simply implodes into him. <laughs> By the way, where's Jenny? She probably took a breakfast for a walk. No, she's already had her baked beans. But how come she's allowed to have baked beans? They're very good roughage. If she wants roughage, she can eat gravel. <laughs> Dad, well, what about us? Oh, oh, all right. I suppose you'll have to buy something on the way to school. Here you are. Hey, hey, so much for my economy drive. <laughs> no, a bacon sandwich or hamburger with everything. Just a minute. Is that what you lot are planning to have for breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, I'm coming with you. <laughs> Did you want me, Grandma? Who are you talking to, dear? Hang on, Tiff. It's Tiffany. Oh, may I have the phone? Hello, Tiffany. This conversation is now terminated. Grandma? <laughs> been talking to her for seven and a half minutes. No phone conversation should last longer than two minutes. But, Grandma... The telephone will be the, the death of communication in the Western world. The dwellers of Tibet don't communicate by telephone. They communicate on, a, on an astral plane. Their minds are tuned. <laughs> but I don't have an astral plane. Dad says I can't have one till I'm 18. <laughs> Why don't you communicate with her face to face? I can't. She lives miles away, down the end of the street. <laughs> Exercise wouldn't hurt you, Deb. Get rid of a bit of that flab. Flab? <laughs> Dad! <laughs> gone mad. What's she done now? She just hung up on Tiff. Nobody can be all bad. She reckons we should communicate on the astral plane. So? Well, if God had meant us to have an astral plane, he wouldn't have invented telecom. God didn't invent telecom. Telecom is an invention of the devil. However, I see your point. What do you want me to do? Can we pay someone to kill her? <laughs> Deborah, that's a terrible thing to suggest. You know we're on an economy drive this week. <laughs> What's he's done? Look at these jeans. What's wrong with them? Can't you see? No. They fit. <laughs> I spent hours in the bar shrinking these and then she let them out. <laughs> she said my loins had to breathe. We are talking about your grandmother. <laughs> Look at them. They cost me a fortune. You mean they cost me a fortune? Oh, and by the way, where's the change from breakfast? Hey? Oh, yeah. Hey, just a minute. What was that? What? That, I caught a flash of blue in your wallet there. Hey, you didn't. Yes, I did. Come on, show me again. That is a hundred dollar note. Where did you get it? Same place Debbie got hers. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right. Who gave you a hundred dollars each? Who? Grandma. This is the same grandma upon whom you wish to place a contract? That was before she hung up on Tiff. Give it back. What? Give it back. Uh, Dad. How could you do this to a nice old lady? The same nice old lady who just ruined your jeans? You're gonna hold that against her forever? <laughs> Dad, she gave us that money out of the kindness of her heart. If we give it back, we'll be hurling that kindness right into her face. If you don't give it back, I'll be hurling my boot right into your backside. <laughs> give it back right away. But, uh... End of story. Get going. Martin, we must talk. What's on your mind, Mum? Well, uh, let me rephrase that. I'll talk and you'll listen. OK, I'm listening. Well, it is my money and I can give it to anybody I like. They're my kids and I'm glad you like them, but you can't give them money. I was only trying to help. Mum, you were interfering. I'm not the interfering type. Oh, <laughs> Mum, you're always interfering. You can never leave things alone. Look at my wedding. Well, a mother's expected to cry. Mothers are not expected to scream. She's not good enough for him. <laughs> it was the emotion of the moment. Mum, you've got to realise that I'm a grown man now. This is my family. This is my you home. You don't have to say I... another word. I'm leaving first thing in the morning. Oh, Mum, there's no need to do that. Oh, yes, there is. I'm on an early flight. <laughs> what? You were going anyway? Yes. I have to be in Spain on Wednesday. Well, if you're going anyway, why did we have to have this conversation? I don't know. I just came in to say goodnight. Goodnight, Mum. Oh, oh Martin. Yes, Mum. I know I, I do interfere a little bit, but I can't help it. 
You do love me, though, don't you? Oh, darling, of course I love mm. you. I just can't get along with you, that's all. <laughs> OK, that's Grandma off. Grab your school bags, off to school. Oh, hi, Betty, you're here early. Oh, yeah, I wanted to get an early start. I wanted to catch Mr Pritchard thingy. Oh, how did it go? Oh. He gave you a check on the spot? Yeah. Dad's system never fails. You didn't hit him? No, I threatened to and he laughed. Oh. So I tore the wing mirror off his Mercedes. <laughs> By the way, where's your mother? Oh, she's off to the running of the bulls in Pamplona. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's what the Spaniards do instead of playing lawn bowls. You see, there are, there are two sides. There's the bulls and the people, and they let the bulls loose in the streets and they chase the people and gore them and trample them and generally make a nuisance of themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah? Which side will she be on? <laughs> Now, you won't get away with it. So, Will, you won't. Look, your problem is you just don't know how to handle Dad. So tell me, how do you handle Dad? One, be honest with him. Two, tell him exactly what you're going to do. And three, do the opposite and confuse the hell out of him. Confuse the hell out of him? The Pope. What's the Pope to do with anything? Nothing if you can get him confused enough. I'm sorry, I'm confused. I rest my case. Hang on. One, two, someone's missing. Where's Nudge? Oh, he's meeting us at the bus stop. Is he eaten already? No. Is he sick? No, no, he's fine. Oh, Dad, can nudge day tonight? Yeah, I suppose so. Paper, please. Oh, Dad, you got the news over there. That is listening news. I want reading news. I like to go at my own pace in the morning. Can you leave me the classifieds? Yeah, what do you want the classifieds for? Cars? Uh, what do you want with cars? Uh, it's a thing about the Pope and motor cars. We're doing it for school. I see. I don't, but I won't admit it. <laughs> Hello, Daddy dear. How are you this morning? I'm fine, thanks, Jennifer. How are you? I'm fine too, thanks, Dad. Dad, please could I have some money if it's all right with you? Yeah, Dad, but can I have some money? What do you want to What camp? A camp for school with Florence's organizer. Oh, you mean brownies? Not brownies. Brownies are capitalists. <laughs> How could a bunch of cute little seven-year-olds in uniforms be capitalists? Miss Lawrence says they're greedy. <laughs> greedy? Yeah, because they're always collecting badges. <laughs> she got a point there. Miss Lawrence is starting alternative brownies. How do you have alternative brownies? Do you have to share things. Like what? The beret. You mean you've only got one beret for the whole pack? It's not a pack, it's a commune. <laughs> I suppose you'll all have a picture of Karl Marx and the Woggles. Yeah, and they're not brownies, they're pinkies. <laughs> <laughs> Who says? Miss Lawrence, yeah. Well, I wish somebody would give Miss Lawrence a bit of advice. I wish someone would give Miss Lawrence a bit of... Simon! Simon! <laughs> <laughs> 
money. Oh, yes. All right. How much do you need? $20. All right. There you go. A day. A day? <laughs> you could stay at the Hilton for that much. You tell Miss Lawrence I'll send her a cheque if that's not too capitalist. She takes banker. <laughs> yeah, I bet she does. Off you go. Hey, Dad. Yes, Deb. I've been thinking. Oh, so that was the noise. <laughs> what about Deb? Um, could I have a bank card? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Dad. When you're 18. Oh, Dad. What do you want with a bank card, anyway? Oh, well, same as everyone else does. What? Get in the debt. <laughs> no, I just want to buy some things with it. Things? What things? Everything. <laughs> giving you a bank card would be like giving Jack the Ripper a chainsaw. <laughs> I suppose you expect me to pay for it? The chainsaw? No, the bank card. Oh, no, I'll pay for it. With what? Money. Oh, yes, and where are you going to get the money from? From work. Work? What work? My job. Job? What job? My job. I told you about it, didn't I? Did you? Oh, I'm working one night a week at the pharmacy. What night? Uh, tonight. Tonight? Tonight's a school night, Deb. I'll pick her up, Dad. Uh, then you, you, then she'll be home early. Well, why are you in such a rush to pick her up? You don't have to do it twice. <laughs> Uh, there's one small flaw in your plan. What? You can't have the car. Oh, Dad! Simon, we agreed you could have the car four hours a week and you've already used up your four hours. But, End of story. But... End of story. <sighs> now, miss, what do you want to work for? For money. I give you money? Yeah, but not enough to buy a car. One night a week to buy a car. I'm in the wrong line of business. <laughs> But it just makes me feel secure to know it's working. Like a Joey in a pouch. A what? Joey. Who's Joey? Anybody's Joey. <laughs> oh, you mean the kangaroo? Oh, Mr. Kelly, who else has Joey's? <laughs> Mrs. Starlin, for one. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about this. You'll get used to it. How's the new flat? Oh, fine. What are we going to do about Maria? What are we going to do about Maria? What are we going to do about Maria? What's up with her? She's a flippity gibbet, a will o' the wisp, a clown. She your new flat, mate? No. Maria in Sound of Music. The musical society's still having auditions. Oh, yeah. Hey, did you get the part of Maria? No, Mrs. Pocklington got it. Oh, gee, that's bad luck, Betty. Mm. Oh, it wasn't luck. The producer said, Mrs. Pocklington had the verve, the vivacity, and the inner glow that an audience would find hard to resist. The producer? Mr. Pocklington. <laughs> I bet she slept with him to get the part, Betty. Oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> Don't worry, there'll be other parts. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, do you think I'd make a good nun? Oh, Betty, it's not the end of the world. I want to be my superior. Well, you might have to start out at the bottom, you know, as a non-commissioned nun. No, no, I mean Mother Superior in Sound of Music. Oh, I see, yes. Oh, you make a fine Mother Superior. Sister Maureen always thought so. There is no Sister Maureen in the Sound of Music. There is in Walgut. You mean you have a different Sound of Music in Walgut? No, Sister Maureen, the Mother Superior at St. Sally's Convent. St. Sally's? In Walgut. They named it after Sally Fields. Why? Because she was the flying nun. <laughs> Sister Maureen thought the church should get in step with the times. They invited Sally Fields over to open it and everything. Don't tell me. The kid's got a half day off from school. No. Why not? She didn't come. <laughs> Next time we saw her, she was under a truck with that Burt Reynolds. <laughs> so, so Sister Maureen decided to change it to St. Torval and Dean. <laughs> Almost like... St. Sally's better, but There you go. What's that? Old letter. Yes, but the mail hasn't come yet. Well, it came yesterday. Well, why didn't you give it to me with yesterday's mail? Because that wouldn't have been fair to the other letters. They were priority paid. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. What is it? It's from the council. I've been shortlisted for the new council building designs. They oh. want to interview me the day after tomorrow. Oh, fantastic. Oh, jeez, I hope you get it, Mr Kelly, because you deserve it. What do you mean? Well, you work so hard and you look after the kids and you put up with me and you're always cheerful and Dad always says nice people deserve nice things. You can't stay mad at it for long. <laughs> Go through now. 
Nudge, what are you doing here? You're staying the night, remember? Oh, yes, of course. Now, what is it, Simon? That I wanted to... <coughs> yes, Betty? Uh, would you like me to leave? Do you want her to leave? Do you want her to leave? No. 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 Oh, all right, I'll stay then. Fine. Simon. Dad, okay. I thought it might be, you know, men's talk. No, it's all right, Betty. Simon, I wanted to talk... Because Dad always used to say, Girly, leave the room. Bobby and me's doing men's talk. Bobby, was he your brother? No, it's the cocky. <laughs> he swore something terrible, but he's nicer. Dad, I've changed my mind. I wanted to leave. I knew it was men's talk. Right, Simon. Now, Dad, I've been going through our agreement. Our agreement? Our agreement on the car. Now, you agree that I'm allowed to drive for four hours a week? Yes. Good. Tell him, Nudge. Well, we've been keeping a log, Mr Kelly, and we determined that all of Simon's driving time is actually, in credit, one hour and seven minutes. What are you talking about? Well, we've deducted all the time spent not actually driving. These include stop signs, 30 seconds, visiting McDonald's, two minutes, 10 seconds, traffic lights, 40 seconds, Colonel Sanders, three minutes. But you just went to McDonald's. I was still hungry. <laughs> and pedestrian crossing. Just give me the total. One hour and seven minutes. Oh, we left one out. What one? When we picked up those birds. What birds? Oh, there was two of them. There was this gorgeous blonde, and then there was one I got. Which one was that? The ugly one. <laughs> it's funny how it turns out that way, though. It? Must be lucky to draw. <laughs> anyway, Dad, so you agree that you owe me one hour and seven minutes driving time? Yes. Then I can have the car tonight. No. Why? Because I'm using it. I'm going to a meeting. That's not fair. That's the way it is. Off you go. Oh, Mr. Kelly. Yes. Um, you wouldn't happen to be going past McDonald's, would you? Out! <laughs> oi, oi, where are you going with that? Oh, I'm taking it to Nudge. He's hungry. Oh, uh, listen, when you asked if he could stay here, I didn't know he was going to stay here a month. Uh, Dad, it's only been two days. Well, he's eaten enough for a month. Come on, when's he going home? What's going on Nothing's here? Something's going on. Something's going on. <laughs> Kelly, hadn't you better get dressed? You've got to go see the council. Yes, I know, Betty. I'm just looking for my blue shirt. Oh, by the way, uh, thanks for sewing on the name tags for Jenny. I need one too, Dad. Good girl. It seems like an awful lot of trouble to go to. Wouldn't it be simply to just stamp a name on a forehead? <laughs> Betty, it's not so people will know who she is. It's so she will know who her clothes are. <laughs> Did you understand that? Yeah. Could you explain it to Betty? Use small words. <laughs> now, where is my blue shirt? I left it on the ironing board. Nudge, what are you doing? I'm getting something to eat. But Simon just took you a whole crate of food. I forgot the bananas. <laughs> First we have Band-Aid, then we have Live-Aid, then we have Sport-Aid, now we've got Nudge-Aid. <laughs> if I want to give away this much food, I'll call Bob Geldof. <laughs> now, where the hell is my blue shirt? Nudge, what colour is that shirt? It's blue. Where'd you get it from? It was on the ironing board. Why did you put it on? Because it was still warm. <laughs> Nudge, that's my shirt. I wanted to wear it. All right. All right. I don't want to wear it now. Yeah, Dad. Betty said she had another clean one for you. Oh, fine. Thanks. But the fact still remains, Nudge, you cannot just wear all our clothes and eat our food. Haven't you got a home of your own to go to? No. Good one, Dad. Hang on, Nudge. It's all right, mate. Why is it when somebody does something wrong in this household, it always turns out to be me? <laughs> Dad, are you still up? Dad, it's a quarter to twelve. You should be in bed. Uh, Dad, what's that? Jenny Kelly, age six and three quarters. I wonder why the mayor kept calling me sweetie. Listen, what are you still doing up? Oh, I have to hand in this essay by Friday. Well, you can do it tomorrow night. Come on. I can't. I'm working tomorrow night. But you work tonight. I thought you were only working one night a week. Well, I am, but this week I'm doing it twice. It's the schedule. The schedule? Well, the week finishes on Wednesday. So tonight was really last week, and tomorrow night will be next week. <laughs> and then there's all the other extra nights I have to do. Deb, simple question. Between this Wednesday and next Wednesday, how many nights a week are you working? One. Good. Three times. That's it. I am not going to have you working three nights a week. What do you want a car for anyway? You haven't even got your license. Tiffany's getting a Celica when she gets her license. You can't have everything Tiffany has. She gets a door key, you want a door key. She gets a dog, you want a dog. When she got her first period, you wanted one. <laughs> you sold for weeks. Dad. Come and sit down. 
Deb, there's a thing called peer group pressure that you're going to have to learn to cope with. I know, Dad. You've got to learn to be your own person, regardless of what your best friend is doing. Don't be influenced by people. Don't listen to anyone. <laughs> she could have listened a bit. <laughs> How could one child need so much luggage to go away camping for two days? Burke and Wills didn't have all this. Yes, but look what happened to them. <laughs> yeah, you got a point there. Here, help me check it out, will you? Right, jeans, warm jumper, walking shoes, pyjamas or tracksuit. Rambo knife, grenade launcher, <laughs> copy of Karl Marx Manifesto. Oh, look, Jenny, you can't take all these. You can only take what's on the list. They are on the list. Where? At the end. Mrs. Stubbs, Blinky, Mr. Frisbee, Harry Horse. I thought these were the teachers. <laughs> Miss Lawrence didn't write these. No, I did. Why? So I wouldn't forget them. You cannot take them all. Sorry, Mrs. Stubbs. My dad says he can't come. No, no. Oh. Why did you do that to poor old Mrs. Stubbs? Because I don't like her, Mark. But what's wrong with her? She's got beady eyes and she stares at me. She's right. <laughs> right, now, what about all these? What about them? Well, you cannot take them all. I'm not. I'm leaving Mrs. Stubbs. You can take one and one only. Now choose. B, five, four, seven. You're the one who came past. I'll take Bert there. Terrific. Bert, have a wonderful time. Send us a postcard. And thanks. What's that? Yeah, his clothes. He's the list. Oh, <laughs> all right. Now, Jenny, this is your first time away. Have you got your manners with you? Yeah. Right, I want you to eat everything that's put in front of you. Yeah. Do as you're told. Yeah. And when we say goodbye at the train... Yeah. ...you won't cry, will you? No. Well, that'll be one of us. It's empty. What is? The fridge. You emptied it yesterday and the day before. Did I? Yes. Tell me, Nudge, do you have any idea of the concept of time? I. It's half past one. No, not, not the time. Time is an abstract. Oh, you mean like finger painting? I failed that. <laughs> I'm not making myself clear, am I? No. Well, let me put it this way. Four days ago, you came here to stay overnight. That was three days ago. Now, one of two things has happened. Either you've stayed longer than you intended, or we're in a time warp. Understand? No. <laughs> let me put it away you might understand. You have been here for three fridge refills. That long. <laughs> that long. So when are you going to leave? I'm not. Well, you can't stay here. I can't afford it. Well, I'll get a flat or something, Mr. Kelly. You can't get a flat. You're still at school. What's the problem? Well, I had a blue with Dad. Well, every family has its arguments. He hit me. Where? In the kitchen. <laughs> That's not what I meant. He gave me a clip over the ear. No, hang on. Look, nudge. Let's talk about it. There's nothing to talk about. I'm not going home. What? Are you frightened he'll hit you again? No, I'm frightened I'll hit him. What? Well, he's crook, Mr. Kelly. What do you mean? He's got a bad heart. That's why he's on compo. Oh, look, Nudge, I'm sorry. I didn't realise. Do you want me to ring him? Oh, no, thanks. Look, Nudge, I realise that sometimes I'm hard on you. You're always hard on me. Well, that's because you're always eating me out of... <laughs> Nudge, I'm sorry. Look, Who I'm sure I can help. Anyone hurt? Oh, hello, Betty. What are you doing here? Oh, I just got the good news. I had to tell someone. Good news? What good news? I got the part. <laughs> Part? What part? In The Sound of Music. They just rang to tell me. Mr. Pocklington said I had, uh, I was a real natural for it. He said I had, um, Christma. Is that good? That's good, Betty. Oh, good. Well, he said I had it. And, um, and he said they really believed me in that part. So, you're playing the Mother Superior? No, the head of the Gestapo. <laughs> There's not a lot of difference, is there? No. No, they both wear black. Well, I'm glad somebody's got good news. Well, what, what's the matter? Oh, Nudge's got a problem. Oh, yes, I've noticed. Look, Nudge, you'll have to learn to chew your food 32 times, otherwise you'll never stop doing it. I mean, what? Well, you know. No. You know. No. You'll get wind and you'll... Betty! <laughs> Cows do it all the time. Not in my living room, they don't. <laughs> anyway, that's not the problem. Well, what's up, Nudge? Nudge doesn't want to talk about it. My dad hit me. He does want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Nudge, but I'm sure you'll sort it out. Betty, that's not like you. Yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, that kid's got a problem and you just walked out on him. It's his problem and you're wrong. 
Wrong. He's not a kid. He's 17. Next year he'll be allowed to vote. <laughs> That's a sobering thought. But he can't work it out for him. He's got to do it for himself. How yes, could you I do this like to me? We had a deal. Well, the deal's off. Tough luck. Look, this is important and you go and do this to me. All right, what's going on here? Dad, Dad, Dad you know that, that money she was working for? She went and spent it on herself. How could you do such a thing? Shame, shame. Well, it's not fair. She said she was going to buy the car, and then she went and bought this great jacket. First you want to buy a car, now you're buying a jacket. What's going on? Well, there was only one of them. So? So Tiffany won't have one. Good thinking. I thought so. Oh, well, it's not fair! <laughs> she said she was going to buy the car. Well, what's it got to do with you? I was going to rent it from her. Oh, yeah? Where are you going to... <laughs> Where were you going to get the money from? You were going to give it to me. Oh, well, there's no way in the world you're going to be giving it to me. Wait, listen, right? that's the car. Yes, right? what do you want, Nudge? I think I'll go home now. Oh, fine, fine. Oh, fine. You've worked it out with your dad, have you? No, I just can't stand all the noise around here. <laughs> Nudge, have an apple for the trip. I've already got one. Of course you have. <laughs> Mr Kelly. Yes, Betty. I thought you handled that rather well. Hey, listen, what's wrong with you lot? Have you gone deaf? What's that, Dad? The phone. Isn't somebody going to answer the phone? It'll be for you, Dad. How do you know that? Oh, well, it sounds like it's for you. Yes, it's got a definite ring to it. <laughs> right. If it's for either one of you two, I'm telling them you've gone to Tibet for the weekend. Hello? Deborah? No, I'm sorry. She's uh, not here. She's gone to Tibet. <laughs> See that? Like a seagull swooping on a chip. Oh, uh, no, I can't. I'm sorry. No, um, my father says I'm not allowed out anymore. Goodbye. Um, what did I say you're not allowed to do anymore? Work. I've chucked in my job. No, I didn't say you had to chuck in your job. All I said was that you couldn't work three nights a week. Yeah, but they wanted me to work tonight. Tonight? Saturday night. That's great. That's terrible. Why? Well, I don't mind working on school nights, but not on my own time. <laughs> well, what about your car? I don't need one now. Why not? Well, I told Tiffany she could wear my jacket if I could drive her Celica. By the time she gets her car, that jacket is going to be out of fashion. Yeah, well, Tiffany may be rich, but I never said she was bright. Yeah, well, you're too young to be working anyway. Although there are some people around here who should be thinking about it. You talking about me? Yes, get a job. I don't have to. I've worked it out. Worked what out? I'm going to get a rich woman to support me. <laughs> you? Huh, that chance. Oh, I've already had one offer. What? Who? A gentleman never tells Dad. I'm not talking about a gentleman, I'm talking about you. It was that Mrs. Erringham, wasn't it? No. Then it was Mrs. Simpson? No. Well, who was it? I'm not going to say, but thanks for the tips, Dad. <laughs> they weren't tips. Hello? Yes. Jenny! Jenny, what are you doing back? I came home. Well, are you sick? No. Well, is something the matter? I'm fed up. Why? They wanted us to sleep on the floor. So? There wasn't one. It was the ground in a rotten old tent. Oh, but darling, that's what you do on camps. You sleep in rotten old tents. Well, nobody told me. I thought you knew. I thought we were going where you said. Where? To the Hilton. <laughs> you got to admit, the kid's got style. <laughs>
your art assignment finished last night? Yes, Dad. Thanks for your help. No problem. Oh, uh, did you put my drawing equipment back on my desk? Uh, yes. Deborah, your lips are saying yes, but from where I'm sitting, the back of your head is saying I'll do it after breakfast. After <laughs> breakfast? I can read them like a book. Morning. In his case, sex and the single girl. Uh -huh. Excuse me? Had a late night, did we? Homework. Oh, is that all? You don't want to ever do that. On the other hand, you seem to be underdoing it. What happened to your homework last night? Dad, my homework's done. When did it get done? Every time I asked you, you said, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. I was doing something else. You were doing nothing, but I'll admit you were doing it with total dedication. <laughs> you know, it fascinates me how you children can put so much effort into doing nothing. Sometimes you can stretch nothing out over three or four hours. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, my foot. What about your foot? I'll oh, oh, oh it up your behind if I don't see that homework immediately after breakfast. Dad, can I have five dollars for a new sketchbook? Eh? Uh, all right. There you go. Ah, oh, that reminds me. You owe me three bucks from the pizza the other night. Have you got change of five? Oh, listen, while we're handing it around, what about that $8 you owe me for the movie? Here's five, like that is three. Right, well, make sure you do. I don't want to... What are you doing? It's mine. You gave it to me. But it's mine. No, this is the one you gave me. Hang on a minute. I only had one five in here, and I think somehow that just cost me $10. <laughs> Good morning, Jennifer. I slept very well last night. How did you sleep? Now, what did you say? Dad, we're still out of baked beans. Oh, don't worry, Jen. I'll buy some tomorrow. Why does she always have to eat baked beans? Well, at least we always know where she is. <laughs> Dad, what can I have for breakfast? Oh, I don't know. Have some cereal. I don't like cereal. Can I buy something on the way to school? Like what? A can of baked beans. Oh. Jenny, you can't eat baked beans on the bus. I did last week. It was good. Why was it good? I got a seat to myself. <laughs> have some toast. You cannot eat baked beans on the bus. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mr. Kelly. Good day, mate. Nudge, you're not eating. Oh, in a moment, Mr. Kelly. Business before pleasure. Oh, well, there's your English and uh, that's your maths. Just a minute. What's going on here? Nudge is doing Simon's homework. Thanks a lot. What for? Well, for money. Here's my bill. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Give me a look at that. What's this? For, for maths and English homework, $4.75 or, say, one pizza with a lot. What's this? Well, it's a, it's a tax dodge, Mr. Kelly. Keep it quiet. You never know who's listening. Simon, are you actually paying him to do... Dad, Dad, Dad. I know what this looks like, but it's not what you think. Tell me, Simon, what is it? Well, I'm doing this for Nudge. You're doing it for Nudge. Yeah, well, by letting him do this for me, I'm giving him the extra practice and vital skill development that he needs to improve his schoolwork. What about you? Oh, well, I don't need that. Why not? Because I'm terrific. Yes, and you're also grounded until further notice. Ah, uh, what? You're going to do your own homework from now on. All this bribing of nudge is going to have to stop. There will be no more payments. Well, Mr Kelly, I feel I should warn you. What? If I don't get my pizza, I'll sue. I still don't understand. I gave Debbie five. She gave Simon five. He gave her two. Oh, oh Betty, there you are. Oh, am I late? No, no, no. Now, don't take off your coat. Well, am I too early? No, no, no. Come here. Sit down, sit down. I want you to help me. Oh, nice. Now, I give you $5 for a sketchbook. What? Right. Now, you give it to Simon, and he gives you $2 change. Oh, well, I'll have to owe it to him. What for? Because he's not here. No, 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 no. I'll be Simon. Oh, well, so I'll give it back to you. No, no, no. You're not giving it to me. I'm Simon. Give it to me. Right. Now, I give you the two dollars. Oh. Well, what's wrong? Well, I had five and now I've only got two. <laughs> no, no, no. You be Debbie. Right. Now, I give it to you. Oh, good. Got right. it back again. Now, you give it back to me. Oh, who are you this time? I'm me. Who do you think I was? I thought you might be Simon. No, you're Simon. Well, why am I Simon? Because you're simple. Now, <laughs> now you be Debbie. Oh, Mr. Kelly, can't I be you this time? What for? Because you've got all the money. No, no, be Debbie again. Right, now, here's the five dollars for the sketchbook. Now, how much have I given you? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? I don't want a sketchbook. I can't even draw. <laughs> I still don't know how much it cost me. Yes, I do. It cost me my sanity. <laughs> Oh, Betty. Mr. Kelly, if you're going to give me any more money, don't bother. I'm too busy. No, no, no. I'm looking for the McCann letter. Shouldn't it be here? It is here. I'm on my third draft. You're doing three drafts of a half-page letter? Yeah, well, you know what they say. Slow and steady wins the race. 
Inside the two bulls. What are you talking about? <gasps> oh, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, there was an old bull and the young bull. And the young bull says, let's run down to the paddock and bleep a couple of those cows. <laughs> and the old bull says, now nah, let's walk down and bleep all of them. <laughs> Good night, Ty. No, don't be silly. Bulls can't tie. Well, my question still stands. How come you're doing three drafts of a half-page letter? Well, first I type it up, then I do my spelling draft, and then I put in my ickies and blobs. Your what? My ickies and blobs. Look, I'll show you. Dear Sir Icky, thank you for your letter, Blob. Uh, are you certain of the specifications, yeah. Squiggle Blob? What are you talking about? Well, if I don't put them in, nobody will understand it. Give me a look. You mean punctuation. Oh, is that what you call it in the city? In Wagga, we call them Mickeys and Blobs. I like the diddles and doddles best, but... <laughs> diddles and doddles? Yeah, you know, when you go, um, diddle diddle. Hello, Blob. How are you, Squiggle Blob Diddle Dog? <laughs> and then, like, he might say, answer, um, Diddle Diddle, I'm fine, Icky, but my budgie fell in the combine harvester block. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, Zip Blob Diddle Dog. <laughs> now, now, do you understand? Wh Squiggle Blob? I can't stand this, I'm going to get a coffee. Simon, what do you think you're doing? Oh. Watching TV. That's Sesame Street. Yeah, there's nothing else on. But why are you watching it? It's educational. Oh, fine, right. Well, as soon as Big Bird teaches you how to count to ten, go to your room and do your economics assignment. Ah, there's plenty of time for that. You're not getting nudged to do it again for you, are you? No, I'm writing it myself. Are you sure? I'm writing it myself, OK? Right, well, make sure you do then. Oh, good day, Simon. Oh, have you done it yet? Yeah, here's all the notes. Are you watching Sesame Street? Yeah. Oh, that's for kids. <laughs> I like Big Bird. <laughs> I bet the next one's nine. Oh, come on, mate. Give me the notes. <laughs> Payment first. Oh, here you go. Oh, where'd you get that? Oh, from the fridge. Well, I could have done that, couldn't I? <laughs> that's right. Now, yeah, give me a look. Hi, guys. You sure this is right? Yeah, I checked it in two books. Simon, you know what Dad said about Nudge doing your homework? I'm writing it. He's simply doing the research. Oh, what a con. Well, it's, um, well, it's time and movement. Uh, efficiency. Mm. What? It's an abstract concept. You wouldn't understand it. <laughs> All right. Nudge, you explain it to me. Oh, um, oh, well, uh, Simon said, um, as long as we were both doing it, there'd be no point doubling up. Is that right? Right on, mate. Dad'll be angry. And not if he doesn't find out. <laughs> Girls, they don't under and understand abstract concepts. <laughs> oh, what a drag! What's up? I just missed them doing ten. <laughs> Betty, how come we've spent so much money on milk? What's that, Mr. Kelly? This receipt, it says dairy, $51. Oh, let me see. Oh, yeah, I know, Betty's. <laughs> I was um, at the newsagent. You're buying milk at the newsagent? No, I was reading Cleo while I was waiting, and somebody up in the sealed section, and I read it before we So? Well, so I felt guilty, so I had to buy something. Well, where does the dairy come into it? Oh, it's not dairy, it's diary. You paid $51 for one diary? I bought three of them. <laughs> Why did you buy three diaries? Because they're unspecial. <laughs> what earthly use are three diaries? Well, you might get real busy. <laughs> if you don't, you can always use them next year. I can't possibly use this year's diary next year. Yeah, of course you can. All you do is change the date by one day on each page. Or in a leap year, it's by two. Or is it the same? Anyway, it never bothered Dad. He used the same diary for five years. 
How could he possibly keep track of all his appointments? Oh, he just used to write milk cows on each page. <laughs> of course, you know, that's all they do in the country, no matter what day it is, even in a leap year. Fine, right. Well, that's the $51 accounted for. But listen, we're $40 out in petty cash. Are you sure all the receipts are here? Yeah. But we're $40 out, Betty. It doesn't add up. Have you taken it and you haven't told me? Oh, of course not. Hello. Yes, this is Martin Kelly. Oh, yes, Mr. Gardner. What can we do for you? Is that Gardner off? Uh, yeah, we sent it this week. Well, it... But it's supposed to... No, we... Betty, could you show me the invoice you sent to Mr. Gardner? <sighs> Betty, this is supposed to be for $1,250, and you've made it out for $12,500. Oh! Have I? Oh. Yeah, that's more blood in the wrong place. <laughs> That's all? That's all? I mean, how can I possibly tell a client he's been overcharged $11,000 because you blipped when you should have blocked? <laughs> it's not that bad. Of course it's that bad. It's going to have to stop. I mean, there's this, and, and we're $40 out in petty cash. God knows how long that's been going on. Are you saying I took it? Well, somebody must have. I know it wasn't me. Mr Kelly, if you feel like that about me, then it's, it's best if I go. All right, then. See you in the morning. No, I mean go. What go? I mean resign go. Oh, well, uh, if that's the way you feel about it then. I can't work here if you're not going to trust me. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. It is. Right, fine then. Yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. Terrific then. Wonderful. What have I done? Squiggle blob. Now, you know that wasn't my fault. Mostly. But now I'm going to have to tell the kids, and they're really going to be upset. Ah, Deb. Yes, Deb? A uh, bit of bad news. A uh, bit unpleasant, really. But uh, oh, I suppose you should know about it. Uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you're taking it so well. Yes, uh, perhaps it's for the best. Uh, bound to happen sooner or later, so we won't uh, say any more about it then. <clears throat> Dad, what are you talking about? I fired Betty. Oh, is that all? Is that all you have to say? Is that all? I mean, you, don't you have any feelings for the girl? What, are you taking nasty pills or something? Is that all you have to say? Is that all I have to say? Is that all? I mean, I tell you I've hurled Betty out and all you say is, is that all? I mean, is that all? Yeah, that's all. Oh, where's your compassion? I mean, are you taking cold-blooded lessons at the school you go to? Oh, I blame the education department. Been like this ever since they introduced computers. Nobody has any capacity for sympathy or warmth anymore. I mean, you kids don't know how to relate to your fellow human beings. Well, I didn't fire Betty. Right. <laughs> right. You have been enough trouble when you tell Jenny. Right. Did you want to see me, Dad? Ah, oh, yes, Simon. Uh, Nudge, this is private. Oh. <laughs> it's all right, Mr Kelly. Uh, no one can hear you. What about you? Well, I'm all right. I can hear. I'm, I'm not deaf, you know. <laughs> no, just because I say I want to see Simon, it doesn't necessarily mean that I wish to see you. Oh. Well, is this all right? <laughs> Does he have to be here? Nudge and I stick together, Dad. Like a twin pack. Yeah, sort of like Batman and Robin. Or Roy Rogers and Trigger. Yeah, like Heckle and Jekyll. Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose he can stay. Well, what did you want to see me about, Dad? Well, uh, Simon... I've been thinking, and I realise I've been depriving you of something vital. What? Responsibility. You're a grown man now, and I feel ready to shed some of my burdens onto your broad shoulders. Sounds fair. That's what I wanted to hear, son. That shows real maturity. I'm proud of you. Mm, I think it's fair too, Mr Kelly. Shut up. <laughs> now, uh, Simon, there is one small task I'd like you to take on for me. Uh, Dad, do you know I'd do almost anything you ask? Almost anything? Yes. And I'm not going to break the news to Jenny that you fired Betty. Well, is there anything else you want us to help you with, Mr Kelly? Roy? Yeah? You want to take Trigger out of here before I break his legs? <laughs> hey, Dad, will you tell Jenny to get out of the bathroom? Yeah, she's been in there for hours. She won't come out if I ask her to? Oh, what do you mean? She found out I fired Betty, so she's locked herself in the bathroom. Oh, not that one again. Yeah, and this time she's taken my watch, my other glasses, my pens and my car keys. What for? Hostages. <laughs> she says she's going to flush one down the toilet every half hour until I rehire Betty. You could always go to Bondi to pick them up. Dad, what are you going to do? 
Well, Deborah, I think at a time like this, it's best to use some psychology. Psychology? Yes. What we might see as an act of defiance is really a statement of Jenny's individuality, and we have to allow her to make her statement until she feels ready to rejoin the family unit. And then what? And then I'm going to belt the hell out of her. <laughs> that's psychology? No, that's because I'm dying to go to the toilet, and at times like this, psychology isn't worth a pinch of cocky pop. <laughs> While you're here, give me a hand. What are you looking for? I'm looking for an invoice for Mr. Gardner. Well, shouldn't that be under G? Oh, no, she files them under the day they come in, like M for Monday, and there's no such day as gun day. Oh, this should be only seven files. Oh, no, she could file it under E for 11 o'clock. She does it that way, too. <laughs> or she could file it under I. I for invoices. No, I for... I wasn't sure where to put it. <laughs> or I for... Oh, I give up. Uh, Dad, we've got to get going. Yeah, righto. Psychology's over. Let's get Jenny out of the bathroom. After all, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. And a man's got to do it when he's got to do it. Hello. Anyone home? Oh, Betty, you're back. Oh, just a quick visit, Mr Kelly. I forgot my keys. Oh, right. Well, uh, now that you're here, I'd just like to say... Oh, no need to say anything. I've forgotten it already. Oh, well, these misunderstandings happen. Actually, I should thank you. No, not at all. I'm really glad you're back at work. Oh, no, I'm on my way to work. I got a great new job. You firing me was the best thing that could have happened to me. I didn't fire you. Me firing me was the best thing. <laughs> right, well, uh, where are you working? I'm managing a nail boutique. Oh, you're doing manicures? Nearly. I'm managing a hardware store. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's all nails and fencing wire and cement and... No, stuff I understand. So, thanks for everything and toodaloo. Oh, no, hang on, Betty. No, 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 uh, don't, don't, don't go. Oh, Mr Kelly, first day on the job. I can't be late. Well, uh... Hi, Dad. Hi, Debbie. Oh, is this cake? No, nails. What'd you buy nails for? Oh, we were out of them. You never know when you might need nails. Nudge? Yeah? Go home. Right. <laughs> Look, Dad, I just wanted to give you... What are all these? Nails, 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 all nails. What are you building, an ark? <sighs> no, Betty's working at the hardware store. I had to go and see her seven times to find out where things are. <laughs> I was so embarrassed I had to buy something every time. Single-handedly, I've turned her into Australia's champion nail salesperson. <laughs> now she'll never come back. Oh, too bad. Anyway, I just wanted to give you change back. Change? What change? From the $40 I took. You took the $40? Yeah. From Betty Cash? No, for your wallet, remember? Oh, right, yeah. I said I could always replace it from Petty Cash. Oh, <laughs> my God. You know what this means, don't you? What? I'm going to have to buy an awful lot of nails tomorrow. <laughs> Nudge? Yeah, Mr Kelly? Did I ask you to leave? Yeah. Good. Bye, Dad. Who's that for? Nudge. He's not doing your assignments again for you, is he? I told you, Dad. I wrote them myself. All right. Well, what mark did you get? Thirteen. Thirteen out of twenty? That's not good. Oh, it's a pass, Dad. It's not good enough. You can do better than that. What did your teacher say? She loved it. She said it was facile. <laughs> facile. And it isn't good. Well, I thought it was. Facile means shallow. It means you have no depth to your thinking. It means you didn't do enough research. She's a hard marker. Nobody got over thirteen. I did. <laughs> what did you get? I got 18. She said I'd, I'd appeared to have done enough work for two people. And I had a complete grasp of the subject. Oh, I think I'm pretty good at abstract concepts. Oh, far out! What's the matter? I just missed Big Bird doing ten again. Morning, Mr Kelly. Morning, Betty. Betty, is that you? Well, who else would it be? Well, uh, I wasn't expecting you. I wasn't expecting me either. Uh, what happened about your job at the hardware store? I chucked it. Why? I mean, you were doing so well. Yeah, I sold a lot of nails, didn't I? So? So, I was out the back and Mr Howard snuck up on me and tried to do the Cleo sealed section with me. <laughs> That's when I chucked it. The job? No, the bag of cement. <laughs> Jeezy went pale. <laughs> Why? Because the bag broke all over him. It wasn't pretty. Well, I'm really glad you're back, Betty. I mean, I've got a whole list of things I couldn't find. Well, you just give it to me and I'll find them for you. Right, well, here you are. Oh. 
Now the Willard fall. Oh yeah, that's under M for Monday. Of course. And the Perkins header, that's under T. For Tuesday? No, for two o'clock. <laughs> and the Harrison fall, that's under P. P? What's P for? For perhaps we ought to do something about this one. <laughs> Logical in a twisted sort of way. Oh, by the way, did you find that $40, Mr. Kelly? Eh? Hey, oh, uh, yes, uh, Betty, but uh, <clears throat> we'll forget about that, shall we? You took it, didn't you? Yeah. How'd you know? Well, someone had to, and I knew it wasn't me. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really sorry about that, Betty. Never mind. We'll just file the whole incident under X. X? Yeah, for experience. <laughs> Wait a minute, we haven't got a piano. Oh, what the bloody hell is that thing doing there? It's Hector. Hector? It's my piano, Hector. Well, where did he it come from? From Walgood, same as me. Oh, yeah, I realize that. How did it get here? Has it got some sort of homing instinct that follows you wherever you go? Men got the this morning. Men? What men? The men with the van. They said they were delivering it from Walgood. You mean you let strange men into the house with a strange piano? It's not strange. Betty knows it. And said to them, fine, just leave it there, right in the middle of the living room. Well, where else do you want them to leave it? Up a tree? Ah, oh, so now I'm running a house for wayward furniture, eh? What other little surprises have you got in store for me? A paranoid electric fence? <laughs> An alcoholic rocking chair on the toilet? Uh -huh. A manic depressive milking machine in the backyard? Uh, cut it out. We never had a milking machine in Walgut. I used to play Hector for Angus, though, but... Who's Angus? Who's Hector? Who cares? <laughs> Angus was the ball. I used to play romantic music on Hector to get him in the mood. Oh, Hector's your piano. Yeah. Oh, why Hector? I named him after a famous musician. Hector Berlioz. No, Hector Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> he conducted a concert in the town hall. And the kids got a half day off and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Hector Crawford? No, Angus. Dad got really mad. He said, Betty, get me the bleeping shotgun. I'm fed up with this bleeping pansy bull. <laughs> yes, dear, it's Betty's. Can I play it, Betty? Good, dear. No, dear. Oh, Dad. You can play the piano when I'm not here. You're always here. 
Yeah, well, the piano's not always going to be here. It's going as soon as Betty moves out. Oh, we used to love music in the country. Miss Lawrence says music is sexist. The closest Miss Lawrence comes to music is when she plays the cannons in the 1812 overture. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Kelly. All right, who mentioned food? <laughs> hey, Nads, we've got a piano. Yeah, who owns it? Who cares? I do. Yeah, what do you call it? He calls it Hector. Oh, that's a good name. I'll call mine Tom. Tom Jones. No, Tom Piano. <laughs> I don't believe it. I've met two pianos this morning and it's only a quarter past eight. It's a quarter past eight. You kids are going to miss your bus. Come on. Get a move on. Get going. Hi, Jenny, don't forget your bag. Bye, 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 girls. Bye, Nudge. Bye, Simon. Who cares? <laughs> Whatever you say. Well, I think it's time to go to work at Dennis Drawing Board. <laughs> Well, all I can say is they must be very clean people. I'm staying right out of this. I mean, not too many people that have three of them. It's between her and her brain. <laughs> they did, they wouldn't put it in their head. I can't stand it. Betty, what are you talking about? The three brooms. What three brooms? The three brooms in the air. Oh, let me see. See? Flat, two let, three brooms. <laughs> no, not the three bedrooms. It's three bedrooms. What? Broom for each one. No, forget <laughs> brooms. They want you to know they've got three bedrooms. But I only want one. Well, pick the padded one. <laughs> I don't know why I bother. She gets me every time. Well, how many brooms do they have? They haven't got any brooms. Well, I'm not staying now. <laughs> oh, how revolting. I am not going to do that. You know I shouldn't. You know I'm going to. <laughs> Betty, what aren't you going to do? I am not sharing any bath with any landlord. Oh, Betty, what are you talking about now? It says here I've got to share a bath with the landlord. No, no, no. That says you have to share the bathroom with the landlord. Well, that's not what it says. Well, that's what it means. I haven't shared a bath since I was a little girl. Yeah? Yeah. I, Dad used to bath me and Terry together. Is Terry your brother? No, his dad's Kelpie. <laughs> Sometimes he'd get really mad. He'd say, you shake water all over me and I'll kick you right up the bum. <laughs> he never said it to Terry, but... <laughs> Betty, could you please put the paper away? We've got work to do. Well, I thought you wanted me to find a flat. I do, I do. But we've got work to do. All right. Oh, and don't throw the paper out. I haven't read it yet. What was that? I had the door. Yeah, I realised that. But who was that? Simon, you're home early. Who cares? I care. Pick up your bag. Uh, Simon, what's the matter? Nothing. Well, have you done something? No, I haven't done anything. Well, are you sick? You could say that. Well, do you want me to call the doctor? No, doctors can't cure this. Nothing can. Simon, what is the matter? Dad, you wouldn't understand. Nobody understands. Simon, of course I'll understand. I'm your father. Whenever you've had a problem, you've always been able to come to me. Come on, talk to me about it. We'll work it out. I'll understand, I promise. I'm in love. Get up if you're lazy behind and get back to school. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't understand. Dad, there's a dagger twisting in my heart. There's going to be a size 9 boot twisting in your behind if you don't get back to school. No one understands. The waves of bitterness are washing me onto the ragged rocks of utter despair. While all the world stands by, refusing to throw me a rope. What was that? That was poetry. That was terrible. What's wrong with Simon? Sorry, what was that like? I went in to borrow his French dictionary and he's just sitting there saying strange things. Like what? But he said I wouldn't throw him a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about him, Deb. He's just in love. With someone else? Yeah. Himself? <laughs> yeah. Why do I tell Tiffany? Oh, no. Now, darling, don't tell Tiffany. She'll tell everyone and Simon will get embarrassed. Yeah, that's the idea of it, Dad. <laughs> Tip, guess what? Simon's in love. Isn't it nice to see a family rally around?
So do I. So watch TV. <laughs> yes, and if he doesn't get better, he's going to be a lot sicker. Dinner in half an hour, everyone. Dinner in half an hour, mate. I'm not hungry. Simon, you've got to eat something. It's not even curry. How can I eat at a time like this? When did you learn that? Ah, oh, years ago. See, there's a few things about me you don't know. In fact, I might even understand your problem. Oh, Dad, it's love. There's no way you can understand. I'll understand. Try me. Well, she's so beautiful. I understand she's beautiful. And she's sort of gentle. I understand she's gentle. And she's the most wonderful woman in the world. I understand she's wonderful. But, Dad, it's really tearing me apart. She's been untrue to me. She's seeing someone else. She's sleeping with someone else. <laughs> what? Who? Her husband. You're involved with a married woman? My English teacher. You're involved with a married English teacher type woman? Yeah, and it's hell. Oh, there'll be hell to pay when I talk to her. Oh, don't speak to her. What's her name? How dare she involve you in her sordid little affairs? Dad, don't speak to her. She mustn't know. Oh, she doesn't know you're in love with her? Not yet. For a minute there, I thought this was serious. <laughs> but I've written a poem. So tell her, well, what do you think of it? Blue is nice. Can I hear it? You won't laugh. I won't laugh. You promise? I promise. Okay, then. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Always start with a quote. That's good. What? Nothing. <laughs> My love is like a spotted dog that wanders lonely on the road <laughs> And all the world is taking turns to kick it <laughs> My love is like a pimple on the face of all mankind And Mother always told me not to pick it <laughs> What? Uh, nothing, sorry, carry on You were laughing No, I wasn't I'll start again No, no, go from there <laughs> I'm washed by waves of bitterness By a sea that doesn't care with nobody to throw a helping rope. I'm cast up on a beach of love in deaths of black despair. And all the while I know there is no understanding. That last bit didn't rhyme. Oh, it doesn't have to. It's free verse. Well, you certainly couldn't sell it. No, come on, Dad. What do you think of it? Oh, what do I know about poetry? I'm only an architect. Oh, well, you don't have to understand poetry. If it's good, like this, it grabs your soul by the throat. Yeah, I felt a bit of that. Come on, what do you think of it? Honestly? I want you to be brutally honest. Bloody awful. What? Bloody awful? I knew you wouldn't understand. You know nothing about poetry or, or true love. I didn't laugh, did I? He can stay with me now that Betty's going. Darling, just because Betty's going doesn't mean you can keep a horse in your bedroom. <laughs> No, you can't keep a pony in your bedroom either. Then can I keep him in your room? <laughs> <laughs> Darling, what you have to realise is this house is not geared to keep a horse. We've got the wrong coloured carpet for a start. <laughs> Simon, washing up, please. Hello? Uh, hello, Simon, testing, one, two, three. Hello, what's wrong with him? Oh, he's not talking, Mr Kelly. <clears throat> yes, I can see that. Why not? Oh, he's taken a vow of silence. I don't understand. <laughs> Well, means he's not allowed to talk. I realise that. But why has he taken a vow of silence? I'm not sure he won't talk about it. <laughs> but I think it's because he's in love, Mr Kelly. Oh, not that rubbish again. Yeah, I think he feels that no one understands the pain he's going through. Simon, this attention-seeking rubbish is going to have to stop right now. What's that? Oh, I think it's a poem. What? Simon's written a poem? Yeah. It says here he's going to... Chuck his plans in to do engineering and he's going to make a living as a poet. He'll starve. Keep it there. No, Dad, look, this is terrific. Make a good living as a poet, do you? Good conditions? How do they pay you, by the stanza or by the rhyme? Damn. Well, Dad, look, the last poetry assignment he did for school was there was a young man from Belgrave who kept a dead Deborah. Boy. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at this one. <laughs> what I tell you? This is called There Was a Young Man from Chatswood. Doesn't get any better, does he? Listen to this. There was a young man from Chatswood whose spirits weren't feeling too good. He fell in love with his teacher, a most gorgeous creature, and nobody else understood. <laughs> That's terrible. Why do I tell Tiffany? You're not reading that to Tiffany. He's cured. I'll break your arm. I believe you need to hands, I say. Give it back. Why? Isn't it nice to see things are back to normal? <laughs> Why? 
Oh, Betty, I left a note for you on the kitchen table. You mean you wrote it? Mm. Oh. <coughs> Mr. Kelly, if you really feel like this about me, it's just as well I'm moving out. What did you say, Betty? I mean, do you really long to see my auburn tresses on my naked shoulders? I suppose so. <laughs> well, Mr. Kelly, I suppose there's no use fighting against it. After all, history's full of situations like this. Situations like what? Romeo and Juliet, Abelard and Eloise, Helen and Troy. Helen of Troy. <laughs> Now, Helen Blackett and Troy Donahue. <laughs> she really had the friskies for him. <laughs> Betty, who is Helen Blackett? She was a girl from Walgood. She was a bold girl. She had Troy Donahue tattooed on her left... left arm. Why? Her right arm was broken. <laughs> she fell off the water tower. We all got to sign a plaster and everything. <laughs> Betty, what are you talking about? Us. Us? And it. It what? It, you know, oh, you don't have to be coy with me, Mr. Kelly. I'm a farm girl, you know. I've seen the animals doing it all the time. <laughs> doing what? It! What is it? Kisses! That is it? Yes! Well, what is it? You're in love with me. <sighs> Why am I always the last person to be told these things? <laughs> Look, you say here, I long to see your auburn tresses on your naked shoulders. Although you do not know it yet, my passion for you smoulders. I fancy every bit of you, your nose, your eyes, your hips. I long to taste the nectar sweet when I mash you on the lips. <laughs> Betty, I didn't write that. That's one of Simon's poems. You mean Simon's in love with me? No, Simon's not in love with you. Then you're in love with me. No, I'm not in love with you. No one's in love with you. Well, why do you all keep writing me these poems? <laughs> Betty, that's not for you. That's for Simon's teacher. Oh. Oh. Mr. Kelly, if I may be permitted one last word. <sighs> yes, Betty. I don't think it's right. What's not right? You shouldn't be writing stuff like this to Simon's teacher. <laughs> Better now? Time heals even the most badly battered hearts, Dad. Yeah, well, it has been a day, hasn't it? <laughs> it, over it. See, I did understand. With all respect, Dad, this was about love. There's no way you could have understood. Yeah, well, just so long as you're all right to drive Betty to a new flat. I didn't realise she was leaving tonight. Well, you have been a little incommunicado over the last couple of days, haven't you? Yeah, she found a quite, quite a nice place nearby. She's sharing it with a girl named Alice. Mm -hmm. Ah, heel nudge. <laughs> well, Betty, all the best in your new flat. Oh, thanks so much, everyone. I mean, look at the cake. What a surprise. You made it. Yes, well, it's a thought that counts. <laughs> Blow out the candles and make a wish, Betty. All right. Oh, Betty. Oh, it's more hygienic that way. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, no, darling, it's not a birthday, it's a farewell. Mm. Well, what do you sing for a farewell? See you later, alligator. <laughs> something on the piano, Betty. Oh, can I, Mr. Kelly? Why not? Yes. Okay. Oh, Couldn't be yes. as bad as Simon's poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you play us Walgut's latest hit? Oh. I can take it if you can. Ready, Hector? Now, Mrs. Thumb on the keyboard and her nine nimble daughters dancing on the keys. <laughs> Keep up, Kay. I wonder if she plays as well as she types. <laughs> <laughs>
was lovely, Betty. Oh, thanks. That was play. terrific, Betty. Oh, can you play one of Prince's songs? No, I only know stuff by dead composers, darling. Well, that's a debatable point, then. <laughs> uh, can I have a go on it? Oh, sure. Uh, quit while you're behind, Nudge. <sighs> I knew this was too good to last. <laughs> I thought he was going to eat it. Oh, oh look, I know that one. Keep playing. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Why do stars fall down from the sky? Dad, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. Come on, Dad, tell me. No, you wouldn't understand, Simon. Oh, it's it's just that song. It it meant a lot to your mother and me. I'm sorry, Dad. Oh, I'll be all right. No, I'm, I'm sorry about before. Saying that you wouldn't understand about love. I should have known better. I understand. Yeah. No. Oh, Dad, it wouldn't eat much. Don't encourage her. <laughs> oh, Simon, Betty get settled in all right? Have you seen her? Seen who? Alice. Who's Alice? Betty's flatmate. She's the sun, the moon, the stars. She fills my entire world. Nobody is that fat. <laughs> Nudge, what's he on about? Oh, he's in love again, Mr Kelly. Oh, my God. Is there anything to eat? Life goes on. Have you written another poem yet? Uh, poetry's kid stuff. Art is where it's at. Alice is an artist, Dad. She wants to paint me in the nude. You tell her to keep her clothes on. <laughs> I think I'll draw a bowl of fruit. Better hurry up before Nudge gets to it. I'll draw it for Alice. Uh, I don't think I can go through all this again. Jack Aranda production for the Seven Network. <laughs>